if he we can get Rakesh's cell phone number. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Before we get started, I want to announce that simultaneous interpretation from English into Spanish, Cantonese, and Tagalog is available for this workshop. If you would prefer to hear this workshop in one of these languages, please listen to the following instructions. Para poder participar en este taller, deberá unirse utilizando el enlace de Zoom que se proporciona en un dispositivo, una computadora, tableta. ¿Dónde? ¿Cómo lo dice? ¿Switch to phone o audio? Tú te vas a... Tengo que, tengo que entrar, tengo que entrar, lo siento. Um, okay. Two results. Sí. Está. Para poder participar en este taller, deberá unirse utilizando el enlace de Zoom que se proporciona en un dispositivo, una computadora, tableta o teléfono inteligente, donde participará en el taller, hará preguntas, silenciará y reactivará el sonido y participará en el chat en Zoom. Para escuchar el taller en el idioma de su elección, deberá usar un teléfono separado para llamar a la línea de conferencia de interpretación. Línea de conferencia en español 1-888-489-0410 如要参加这场讨论会,你需要使用一台设备,例如电脑,平板电脑或智能手机,上提供的Zoom连结进入讨论会,进入后即可问问题,在静音和解除静音之间切换, 以及參與Zoom上的聊天討論,如要用你所選擇。Hi, I'm receiving this in a uh, foreign language. I don't need an interpreter. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes. Um, Hello? We can Hello? Hear you. Okay, I have English now because I was getting another language and I didn't need interpretation. I'm good now. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for joining us this evening uh, to learn about the Air District's Community Health Protection Program and our efforts to reduce community exposure to air pollutants. Hopefully everyone who needs simultaneous interpretation is in the correct channel and hearing the workshop in their preferred language. If you're having trouble accessing this service, uh, please use the chat now and let us know and we will do our best to assist you. Tonight's workshop is being recorded and will be available on the Air District's website. My name is Anish Rana and I work in the Air District's Community Engagement Office. I will be co-facilitating tonight's meeting with my colleague Joshua Abraham. Before I bring in Joshua and others to introduce themselves, I'm going to go over some of the Zoom and other technical features, as well as go over our virtual participation principles for this evening. For those of you joining via web browser on your computer, smartphone, or tablet, you'll see these icons at the bottom of your screen. By clicking the two icons in your bottom left corner, you can mute and unmute your uh, microphone. Can I get things, please? And a large turn the container camera. of chicken meatballs. And then the rest of your mandarin kale salad, please. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, can I ask everyone to uh, mute themselves? If you move down the bar to your right, you will find the participant icon. By clicking this icon, you can see other participants and rename yourself. We ask that you do so now so we can better identify you if you wish to speak later on in the workshop. This is also where you can raise your hand and to indicate you wish to speak. The reaction, the reaction icon all the way to the right provides you another option for raising your hand, 
as well as the ability to share other reactions. And if you're dialing into this meeting tonight with your phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand and then star nine again to lower your hand. Moving further down the bar, you'll find the chat icon. You can use this feature to submit questions and comments privately to workshop hosts and our tech support. If you are experiencing technical difficulties, you can, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, um, you will also be able to use the chat function to submit questions and provide feedback during certain portions of the meeting, which we will clearly identify and explain to you. Please note that all questions and comments in the chat will be recorded. And now I will um, hand it over to Ariana who will go over this slide and these features in Spanish. Hola, soy Ariana Silva del equipo de Interétnica y en esta oportunidad les voy a enseñar cómo utilizar el Zoom para esta reunión. Ya sea en la parte superior o inferior de la pantalla, encontrará una barra negra, la cual es la barra de menú. En esta barra localizaremos cinco botones que utilizaremos a lo largo de la reunión. Empezaremos de derecha a izquierda. El primer botón es el de micrófono o audio. Por favor, silenciese o manténgalo apagado mientras no esté participando. El segundo botón es el de video. El tercer botón es el de participantes. Por favor, utilice este botón para cambiar el nombre con el que ustedes aparecen por su nombre oficial o añadir el nombre de la agencia o afiliación en el caso de pertenecer a una. También podrá levantar su mano desde este botón. El cuarto botón es el de características de chat. Aquí podrá compartir preguntas o comentarios cuando el chat esté habilitado. Por último, tenemos el botón de reacción en el cual podrá levantar la mano, el pulgar o aplaudir. Gracias por su atención. A partir de este momento, la reunión será en inglés con interpretación en español en la línea de conferencia. Ustedes podrán participar aquí en Zoom a través de chat y levantando la mano. Nosotros interpretaremos su participación. Por otro lado, escuchará el intérprete en la línea durante la mayor parte de la reunión. Gracias y se lo devolveré a Nish. Thank you. Since we're in a virtual space, I want to go over our virtual participation principles for this evening. We want to respect the speaker and make sure everyone can hear the information being shared tonight clearly. So one speaker at a time, and you can help us avoid distracting or disruptive background noise by keeping your microphone muted when you're not speaking. Please be respectful of one another. And even though we are not together physically, if you feel comfortable, please share your video when speaking so we can stay visually connected. And finally, in this virtual space, complications do occur as we've <clears throat> already experienced. So we thank you in advance for your patience and flexibility. If you experience any technical difficulties, please contact us through the chat and we will do our very best to assist you. Now I'm gonna hand it over to our senior deputy executive officer, Ms. Veronica Eady, who will share some opening remarks and go over tonight's agenda. So uh, good evening, everybody. I want to thank you for coming out and spending your Thursday evening with us. Um, this is a really important night, so I'm really happy that you've made time to be here with us. I just want to briefly go over the agenda. Um, so we're going to have a welcome from, uh, we're very lucky to have with us tonight, um, the chair of the governing board of the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, Cindy Chavez. I'm going to hand it over to her in a second. We also have Supervisor Nate Miley, who is also a, a long-term board member of the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, and he represents um, East Oakland on the Board of Supervisors. So I'll come to them in a minute. Um, after we hear the welcome from them, we're going to have um, community voices. Uh, we have a really fun uh, video for you to see. Um, we'll go over the nuts and bolts of the AB 617 program so that we have a mutual understanding of what it is we're talking about. Um, and then comes the nomination. Um, what is the next community that we want to uh, be working in? And it's really important um, for you all um, and all of us to participate in the nomination going forward. We'll have um, an opportunity to hear from some community members during the community perspective. Uh, discussion, we'll have a stretch break, and then we'll go into World Cafe. So we have a really packed evening tonight, and I'm um, excited actually to be a part of it. We've been planning this for quite some time. Um, I also want to thank Communities for Better Environment um, for uh, their partnership and the work that they, important role that they played um, in getting us to uh, tonight. Um, so I'll stop there. You're going to hear from me throughout the night. 
Um, I will hand it to um, Cindy Chavez. She is um, on the board of supervisors of the Santa Clara, uh, Santa Clara County. Um, she also chairs our board this year. It's been a real delight working with her. Um, I also just wanna give a shout out to her because coming to uh, our board leadership, she has really made sure that um, equity is at the top of the agenda. So it's really important to have her here tonight. She totally believes in what we're doing. So I will um, hand it over to you, Chair Chavez. Thank you, Veronica. And what a treat for me to get to spend time with you this week. So I am um, really excited. So many of you have joined us tonight. And you know, I know taking time away from your families is always, um, it's a sacrifice and you're making that sacrifice so that we can have a really important conversation about how we can dig in and start to really address decreasing air pollution in some of our most, in the Bay Area, some of our most um, burdened, overburdened communities. And so what we're gonna talk with you tonight about is Assembly Bill 617. And I know you're gonna hear a lot about it tonight, but it passed in 2017 and AB 617 has been a welcome and necessary initiative and really a tool for us to be able to improve environmental justice, public health and equity across the state. Regional air quality has seen some real big improvements over the past few decades, but you and I know that that's not in every neighborhood. Now I'm not with you in your neighborhood tonight, but I'm in an area that's very impacted heavily right now um, by air pollution. And so, you know, part of the reason I was so excited to be on the Bay Area Air Quality Management District Board was because I really felt like this was a calling, not just for me, but for our communities across the Bay Area to work together. So since 2014, we've really been focusing on local air quality in communities with the greatest um, air quality issues. Their care program was our first effort to better understand local air pollution and health disparities throughout the Bay Area. AB 617 has been a vehicle for us to greatly expand these efforts and to be able to partner with you because we shouldn't be doing this to communities, we should be doing this together with community. We wanna make sure that we're meeting your needs and your specific concerns. I am thrilled at this new direction, one that really forges a partnership with us. Um, the Bay Area is, is really you know, making new roads by designing a program that will benefit all AB 617 communities. The Air District AB 617 program is all about working with our most impacted communities to build shared capacity, leverage community knowledge, improve our understanding of local air pollution, support community-based decision-making, plan solutions, take real concrete action, and make sure we're accountable for our progress. We are so proud of the strong community leadership in the AB 617 communities who we have been work partnering with um, to do this work. Again, I wanna thank all of you very, very much for being here. I wanna thank Veronica and her amazing team. You're gonna love working with them. And now if I have a little drum roll, I, I get to introduce my colleague on the board and a great champion for your community and communities all around the Bay Area, Supervisor Nate Miley. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Cindy. Hello and welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for being here this evening to talk about efforts to forge stronger community relationships and leadership. AB 617 is about working with community, forging new and deeper partnerships with community to improve local air quality. Communities overburdened by air pollution are largely the same communities that have been historically overburdened by industrial water, soil, and air pollution. These same communities have been subject to discriminatory federal, state, and local policies, including redlining, urban renewal, highway construction, and local zoning codes that allow polluting industries to locate in or alongside residential neighborhoods. As a result, these communities have experienced disinvestment, limited access to health services and healthy food, low quality education, and few local parks and open space. They are most often low income communities of color. In West Oakland, through AB 617, the Air District deepened its partnership with West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project, 
with whom we co-led the development of the Bay Area's first community emissions reduction plan, owning our own air. And by the way, I served and chaired the uh, ad hoc committee for the air district that worked with the port and the West Oakland Indicators Project to do a lot of things to address uh, air quality out at the, out at the port. In, in the Richmond, North Richmond, San Pablo area, the Air District is implementing a community air monitoring plan with a community-led monitoring outreach team and are working with a community steering committee to develop a community emissions reduction plan. I'm pleased to say that this year we will be recommending to the California Air Resources Board that East Oakland be selected as the next Bay Area community to develop community emissions reduction plan. Community leaders, including leaders from Communities for a Better Environment and New Voices Are Rising have advocated each year for East Oakland to be selected since the launch of AB 617. These community leaders and others are building new leaders around environmental justice issues in deep East Oakland, including supporting and merging youth climate leaders from the flatlands of Oakland. As a representative for this area of East Oakland, both on the Board of Supervisors and formerly on the Oakland City Council back in the 1990s, I'm very proud that the community is being heard and gets this opportunity to partner with the Air District to address the local air quality challenges. This is a victory for community members. I want to congratulate them on their tireless efforts to work for cleaner air in East Oakland. I'm committed to supporting the process. Next, you will hear highlights about the program plan for how the Air District is planning to work with all AB 617 communities, community members, and leaders to make this a reality, as well as the nomination of East Oakland. I'll turn it now back to Veronica. Thank you, Director Miley. Um, I did neglect to introduce myself. It's on the slide, but um, I'm the Senior Deputy Executive Officer over Policy and Equity at the Air District. So for those of you who haven't met me, um, that's who I am, and I, I uh, look forward to meeting you at some point. Um, I did, before I kick things off, I believe I've been told that another uh, of our board members is in the audience, and that is um, Director Davina Hurd. She's a member of the Belmont City Council, um, and on our board, she plays a really important role because she co-chairs our community or the board's community equity, health and justice committee. So welcome, uh, Director Hurt, thank you for being here tonight. So now to kick things off, um, we're gonna start by sharing a short video montage, highlighting some of the community advocates who've been leading this work um, since it started. Hi, I'm Veronica Eady, Senior Deputy Executive Officer of Policy and Equity for the Bay Area Air Quality Management District. If you haven't heard of Assembly Bill 617, it was signed into law in 2017, and it may be one of the most impactful air quality regulations in our district's history. AB 617 re requires local air districts to increase our focus on local air pollution in communities historically overburdened by heavy air pollution and by discriminatory federal, state, and local policies. And as a part of our ongoing efforts to address local air pollution disparities, the Air District is utilizing a shared partnership approach with community to develop and implement protective measures in communities highly impacted by air pollution throughout the Bay Area. But who better to tell this story than our community partners in West Oakland and the Richmond San Pablo area, who've worked hand in hand with Air District staff to co-develop and implement community emissions and air monitoring plans. My host for AB 617 is similar to my personal goal as an activist, which is uh, health equity in my community. And I've met a lot of amazing community members and Bay Area staff members who have supported 
not only me, but the community members on this committee. And I feel that on this committee, um, we could be able to possibly be a model for our future, uh, you know, AB 617 areas. As, as a resident, I do want a clear air for my children, but I also want them to see that we adults are doing something about it. And that it's not just us trying to create something, but that the air quality um, uh, district, it's also involved. I'm 17, um, I'm a senior in high school, and I think it's really important that people my age and like the youth of the city overall um, care about air pollution just because it's something so important and it's something we see in everyday life and we don't really learn about it in school, but yet it's one of the leading factors in many of our diseases. And overall, we are the future of this city, so it is important that the youth are involved in this plan because we're eventually going to be the ones leading it in the future. Communities have problems similar to ours. Why not start somewhere, somewhere and be a model and make it contagious as they see that we're cleaning up and we're doing something and it's a community effort. And it's, and it's a community effort, it's people's voices and it's people's actions that are making a difference. I, I also hope that this, through the process we can really uplift and support our local leaders uh, to, to make sure that our community and our, our people are at the hands of decision making, that we are uh, playing a bigger role than we have previously. Ask the community what it is that we want and how we can work together with industry, with nonprofits, with our schools, with local activists to come together and, and find some of the solutions to those problems. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I saw uh, we had uh, um, quite a few reactions from uh, participants while that video was playing. So it's great to see. Uh, now I'll uh, like to introduce um, Greg Nudd, Deputy Air Pollution Control Officer, who will um, begin our presentations for this evening. Thanks, thanks, Anish. It's a pleasure to, to be here tonight and to um, briefly go over the program plan for AB 617, and I'll hand it back to Veronica, who will talk about the nomination process. Next slide, please. So looking at, at AB 617 from the big picture, the idea is that we're trying to get at this issue of the fact that there are many communities throughout the state and the Bay Area that are bearing a disproportionate uh, load of air pollution. And, and many, if not most of these communities are low income communities of color that are suffering from particular vulnerabilities that makes them more susceptible to this air pollution. So the idea behind AB 617 is to, is to focus resources across the state on uh, addressing that and reducing exposure to harmful air pollutants in these impacted communities. Next slide, please. So in the Bay Area, regional air quality has improved significantly but there are still significant inequities. In fact, sometimes what we've seen is as the pollution goes down overall, the, the inequity increases. Um, and that's because in, in these many of these communities, the air pollution sources are located right next to where people live and, and work and where their kids go to school and where they go to church. And so uh, it, these are very difficult problems to unwrap. So we have, designated, uh, well, actually we have nominated to the California Resources Board and they have designated two plans for um, two communities for the development of community emission reduction plans. We are currently implementing the plan in West Oakland and we are uh, developing the plan in Richmond, North Richmond, San Pablo uh, with uh, it kind of serving in a consulting role with the community steering committee members in both of those communities. What we want to do, though, is kind of take the focus off the named communities and look at all the high priority areas in the Bay Area, all the high priority communities in the Bay Area, and ensure that every one of these communities has some resources to address this problem. Next slide, please. So taking a step back, we're, we're trying to capture this, this new model and this 
flower petal design. And, and the reason why we chose this design is just to make a couple of points. One, every piece of this has to be with the community in the center. It's not an, an air district led program, it's a community led program. And also to capture the fact that it's, that it's an iterative process. It's not something where you, you go into a community, you, you work with them, a plan gets written, and then we go on to the next community. It's, it's something where we continue working in each of these communities for the long term to address these problems. Next, uh, next slide, please. So this is kind of a, a more detailed breakdown of what's in the program. Um, and, and I'll go through some of these in a little bit of detail later, but just to give you a feel for, for what goes into each of those, of those flower petals. Um, and let's go to the next slide, take a look at, at West Oakland. So this is where we are in West Oakland. The things that are in dark green have been completed. The things that are in light green are things that we work on on an ongoing basis uh, in, in, in you know, partnership with the community. And the gray item is the overall program evaluation, which we're in the process of developing. So let's take a look at Richmond in the next slide. So Richmond, North Richmond, San Pablo, we have formed a community steering committee there. We've developed a community engagement plan and all of these other pieces of the puzzle are being, are being worked on um, simultaneously. Next slide, please. So over the next 12 to 18 months, uh, the things in light green here are what we intend to complete in all of our high priority communities. And so on the next slide, I'll, I'll take a little bit of time to explain what those are. So under build shared capacity, uh, capacity building grants, um, those will be made available soon. Um, the, the, uh, we'll hear later about when that uh, opportunity for proposals will be released. But the idea here is to put resources into communities so that community-based organizations can do the work on the ground that needs to be done to, to make sure that we have uh, a leadership structure there that can work on this problem. So training, through, training on air quality through the Bay Air Center, when we develop these plans, we wanna make sure that the community steering committees have the depth of knowledge that's necessary to sit down at the table with this and, and you know, second guess us on things. Say, why, why does the Air District think that's the right thing to do? What about this? And so we wanna make sure that the folks in the steering committee are, have a really strong grounding in air quality issues. And similarly in land use best practices, what you see in, in sadly every environmental justice community that I've been in is a history of really bad land use decisions where heavy industry, light industry is put right next to people's homes, right next to daycare centers, next to senior centers, places like that. So we're looking across the state at ideas on how to um, unwind those issues and how to, to keep them from getting worse. So very important is to train air district staff on environmental justice and equitable community engagement. Um, there's a lot of, of justified mistrust and outrage at the government in these uh, overburdened communities. And the air district staff need to go in there with open minds and open hearts and, and listen and understand how we got to where we are and you know, what our limitations are in moving forward. And building relationships is the heart of this. Without mutual trust, this, this doesn't work. So under understanding community, the preliminary boundary, one thing the Air District staff will not do is, tell, is draw lines on a map to define what a community is. The community needs to define the extent of the community that the plan's gonna be worked on. And then we're gonna look in the community description. Um, and this includes things like baseline health data, um, demographics, uh, history about what's going on in that community, um, you know, how we got to where we are today, known community concerns and known community strengths. So what are the things that the people um, that live there are concerned about and what are the resources that they wanna protect? So emissions inventory, air quality measurement data, health risks from air pollution, uh, these are things that we can come up with on our side, looking at our databases and our models and be able to, to tell the community based on what we know, these are the sources that are driving health risk in your community from an air pollution standpoint. Um, obviously, we don't know everything that's going on in the community, so it's really important for us to combine what we can figure out from our databases and our models 
with what the people who live in the community know about so that we can work together on developing these strategies. And those strategies can be regulatory strategies, enforcement strategies, new incentive programs. And, and those are things that you know, we can plan, we can take action on. We don't need to have a community emission reduction plan to do all of this. So th these are things we're gonna be working on in all the high priority communities across the Bay Area. And so we thought it was really important to kind of establish that, uh, you know, that grounding of the overall program before we talked about the plans for nominating a new community for mission reduction plan. So uh, that will we'll set up uh, Veronica for, for her presentation. Thanks, Greg. So I'm gonna walk us through the nomination process and I'm gonna try to take this slowly. It's a little complicated, um, but um, this is why we're here tonight for the nomination. Um, can I have the next slide, please? So the AB 617 community recommendation and selection process follows um, the California Air Resources Board blueprint, which is a framework for how this program is supposed to be implemented throughout the state. So you see it there on the slide. Um, the blueprint is currently under revision, but for now, this is the blueprint that we have. This was the 2018 blueprint, um, the very first one that CARB put together, and it lays out um, the process that we're going to go through tonight, as well as um, what's happened in the prior years. Um, the blueprint provides, um, and its appendix B, provides preliminary information um, like the community's identifying characteristics, um, preliminary geographic boundaries, descriptions of additional tools and data sources that can be used to identify um, the communities that um, need to be prioritized. Um, there are also uh, details on the assessment and that includes exposure to air pollution, density of air pollution sources, and the magnitude of emissions, cancer risk estimates, sensitive uh, populations, and other measures of vulnerability to air pollution, um, including socioeconomic factors. Um, and then specifics on outreach requirements, like conducting a public process, which is why we're here tonight. Um, all of that information is, uh, has been gathered um, by the Air District with help from our community partners, and all of that weighs into tonight and the um, the nomination. So within the process, CARB staff um, intend to recommend communities based on um, the CARB governing board's direction to A, consider prior air district recommendations of communities not yet selected. And here in the Bay Area, those communities pending selection include um, East County, which is uh, Contra Costa County, um, East Oakland, um, Eastern San Francisco, which includes Baby Hunters Point, um, also known as District 10, um, San Leandro, San Jose, um, Tri-Valley, and Vallejo. Those are all priority communities. And then um, the governing board um, also is directed to um, consider the community and community-based organizations um, supported in those communities. Next slide, please. So um, community leaders have been advocating for East Oakland to be um, a SERP community. That's a community emission reduction plan community um, since the launch of AB 617 program in the Bay Area. Um, and that includes um, leaders from Communities for a Better Environment, CBE, um, as well as New Voices Are Rising. So Communities for a Better Environment Hope Collaborative and other community-based organizations collaborated on a 10-year initiative um, by the California Endowment. And in partnership with the city of Oakland and Alameda County Department of Public Health, they created the Oakland Healthy Development Guidelines. Um, Communities for a Better Environment is a recipient of a community health protection grant. Um, one of our, our grants since 2019 building community leaders around environmental justice issues in deep East Oakland. Um, Mycelium Network, Transform, and Higher Ground have also been funded through the James Carey Smith Grant Program that we administer at the Air District. New, Dist New Voices Are Rising is a CARB grantee from their Community Air Grant Program, and they've also been funded by the Air District to support emerging youth climate leaders from the flatlands of Oakland. 
And past efforts include the Air District partnering with the East Oakland Neighborhood Initiative, um, which was, is an incredible foundation piece to this process to develop the EONI Community Plan on a Transformative Climate Communities Grant. And that's um, administered by a state agency called the Strategic Growth Council. Um, in that process, community members prioritized projects and policies in East Oakland. Um, and the Air District partnered with Planting Justice, Higher Ground, Sobrani Park Resident um, Advisory Council and Merritt College for the San Leandro Creek Project, also part of that, um, the process that I just described. So the next slide, please. So uh, here you see the preliminary boundaries. This includes um, census tracts that are in the top 30% of the pollution burden statewide. Um, it reflects the footprint of the East Oakland Neighborhood Initiative area, and it aligns with the city's East Oakland planning areas and the county's public health regions. Um, and as a part of this process, we lay these preliminary boundaries, but the final boundaries would actually be set by the community through the community steering committee process once the designation has been made. Um, next slide, please. So East Oakland air pollution. East Oakland is a major corridor for transportation of goods via ship, rail, and congested freeways and truck routes adjacent to residential communities, as I'm sure most of us know. This includes the I-880 um, to the east, the Oakland airport, the industrial businesses, and um, logistic businesses associated with the Port of Oakland. Um, east Oakland borders many uh, truck routes, local routes, and trucking um, allowed on freeways, industrially zoned land, which have businesses and, pro and produce and attract a high number of daily truck trips. And, you know, just traveling through East Oakland, you experience that um, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. The state of California um, is using CalEnviroScreen, Screen, which is a pollution screening tool, and it recognizes across a wide array of environmental and public health indicators that include air, water, soil pollution, um, and East Oakland, uh, not surprisingly, is one of the most impacted um, areas in the state um, as depicted by Cal Enviro Screen. The figure shows that the majority of East Oakland census tracts are in the top 50% of pollution burden, uh, burden census tracts in the state. Next slide, please. Um, so the sources of pollution. Um, East Oakland area emissions include stationary sources. Those are factories, crematoria, dry cleaners, gas stations, you name it. Um, mobile and area source emissions, which include, which contribute to PM 2.5, that's the fine particulate emissions um, as shown in the figure depicting East Oakland areas, total PM 2.5 initiatives, I mean emissions, sorry, covered by uh, the regional scale model. Um, can I have the next slide, please? So East Oakland has high rates of cancer um, and heart disease as well, uh, and heart disease mortality, um, as I'm sure many of us know. Um, East Oakland has lower life expectancy compared to other areas in the region. Um, life expectancy is the highest, of course, in the wealthier census tracts that are far from industrial lands and the lowest uh, in income census tracts located downtown, West Oakland and East Oakland. Life expectancy um, is especially low in East Oakland, um, as well as high mortality rates from lung cancer, heart disease, stroke, um, and chronic lower respiratory disease than the rest of Oakland and Alameda County. So uh, next slide, please. So uh, the designation timeline. So here we are here in August um, meeting today um, to discuss with you all about um, the designation and the nomination process. Um, in September, um, we would make a recommendation to the air district committees um, of the board. And in particular, um, I mentioned the community equity, health and justice committee. Um, we would make that recommendation in um, September. And then in October, um, the nomination packet um, is due to CARB, but because of where our, what the way our board meetings are laid out, 
um, our board would actually do the uh, approval of the nomination at our November board meeting. And I don't know the date off the top of my head, but it, it's the uh, early November, probably the first week in November. And then finally, um, in February, CARB will consider that nomination and its board will make the final uh, designation, which is what is required by uh, the 8617 statute. Um, so that is the end of um, the nomination um, presentation. Um, and next we're gonna go to um, the community perspective and I'm gonna pass this on to Susan Goolsby to lead us through this portion of the agenda. Actually, Veronica, before we bring on uh, Susan, let me introduce this segue into the next part of the agenda. Um, Sorry, Joshua. No, I'm passing no. it off to Joshua Abraham from uh, the Air District. Thank you, Veronica, and thank you, Greg, as well. Uh, so yeah, we're moving on to the next segment of the agenda. This is the community leaders perspective uh, part of the agenda. So as you've heard, AB 617 is all about community. It's centered on community. And at the Air District, we see community as a vital partner. Um, we strive to co-lead with community. And we really want to um, encourage and promote the idea of self-determination. So when we're talking self-determination, we're thinking about um, defining the boundaries of the community. Greg right, touched on that. We're also um, relying on community to determine what's the most effective way to reduce emissions within their own community. Um, so in the Bay Area, we have a large metro area um, with many communities of color who have been disproportionately impacted by air pollution sources over a long period of time. We all know this, um, and we're lucky this evening to have representation from many of our communities of concern. So um, it was mentioned by Director Miley, Veronica, and others that um, CDE has been very, very consistent, along with new voices arising and advocating for East Oakland being nominated uh, as an AB 617 community. Um, we also have this evening representation from uh, West Oakland, uh, you'll be hearing from Miss Margaret Gordon later on. Um, from Baby Hunters Point, we have Tony Kelly representing the Baby Hunters Point Community Advocates. And uh, lastly, we have representation from our Richmond San Pablo um, AB 617 program. You'll be hearing from all of these folks throughout the region. But let's start with uh, several representatives from Communities for a Better Environment. And as Veronica said, we'll be hearing from uh, Susan Goolsby first. Susan? Am I, am I on you. mic? Clearly, yes. Okay. Uh, this is purely personal. I have lived on 82nd Avenue, about a quarter mile from AB and I for 30 years. I was recently diagnosed with COPD because of all the pollution. My daughter was diagnosed with emphysema. When my granddaughter was a young child, she made so many trips to Children's Hospital that they finally gave her an albuterol inhalant and machine that she had to use every day just to breathe correctly. I can't open my kitchen window. It's closed 24 seven because of all the particulates in the air. Otherwise I would be cleaning every day. The smell gets so bad that I went on Facebook a few weeks ago and urged people not to go down San Leandro Boulevard by A, B, and I foundry because I was outside watering the garden and I had to wear a mask. It was that bad. I can only go outside for a short time before I have to use my inhaler. Otherwise, I'm gasping for air. And it's not just me. 
It's the community. You can hear people as they're walking across the street. <gasps> it's ridiculous. Again, this was a personal thing. And Communities for a Better Environment is doing such great work. And I hope you listen to the rest of them. Thank you very much. I'll Thank give you. it back to you. Thank you, Susan, for sharing that personal story and making it so clear to the audience. Um, and continuing to represent communities for a better environment. Next, we have Michaela Patton. Michaela? Yeah, um, I was actually wondering if I could pass my time to Esther because I know they have another meeting. Um, so Esther, if you're ready. We can be flexible in that way, absolutely. Um, Michaela, should we return back to you after Esther? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Esther, please. Yes, hello, my name is Esther Goolsby. My pronouns are she, her, they, them. I'm currently staff with Communities for a Better Environment. At first, I started as a volunteer. Um, I also ran for Alameda County Supervisor for District 4. Um, I am from the community. I lived on 82nd for 29 years of my life. I lived there since I was 15 years old. I have COPD. I have asthma. I'm going to die early because of the air that I've been breathing since I was 15 years old. My three children and my soon to be grandchildren are gonna be breathing the same air that literally changes IQs, changes heart structures. It affects development. It's time for us to understand that the root causes of even our bad land decisions is rooted from racist practices. The fact that we have to use AB 617 for the community to do the work, for funds to sprinkle and pass us crumbs is a shame. But we're gonna take this opportunity to actually hold people accountable. And I hope that all the participants paid attention to all the words that have been said before and that we'll be finishing this, um, this meeting. Because it's important for us just not to pay attention to the words, but to hold people accountable. The fact that for years, agencies have came into communities and gathered the stories and the words and the wisdoms and all the experiences from us and better other neighborhoods. And right now, I'm tired of it. Me knowing that I'm not gonna be around for my great greats and I want the youth to develop the areas and I've been a part of so many community actions and groups that have designed the Coliseum area, have designed this East Oakland area over and over and over again. And we're still here. We're still here breathing this air. And we're gonna keep being here. We're gonna continue being here. But what I need and urge everyone to understand, right, is that we have to stop using these racist policies, procedures, programs, stop developing for and actually listening to these communities and allowing them to tell agencies what to do, not have us do the work all the time. Understand that the freeways are there on purpose that the schools, the neighborhoods, the people that live there are there on purpose. We are tired of being the sacrifice zones. We are tired of the pollution. Agencies do have the power to change the regulation. That is what should be happening. But again, we are here. It is time for East Oakland 
when I currently worked for CBE, we went down there to Sacramento against this bill because it, again, is just wasting our time. And a lot of us, because of our health, we're not going to be here. God willing, that change actually happens. Letting you know, when we say communities, it's data out there that shows even certain streets have more pollution than the other streets. When we talk about distance and who's getting what, we really need to understand each one of us that's living on these streets, how much is affecting us, especially our youth and their development. We have to understand this. Stop using our words and not being accountable. Actually understand what is going on right now. I hope you share this um, and the slides. I hope you share it out to the whole public so they can hold everyone that spoke already, including myself, accountable. I just, I don't want to take any more time. Thank you, Michaela, for um switching places with me um i appreciate everyone that joined especially the ones that i asked to come because your voice is needed and your actions later on we're, we're going to come to you and we're going to ask you to participate especially on this steering committee again choose east oakland because we're ready we're here and we want to be a part of this change thank you Thank you, Esther. What you just shared with us uh, is a gift. Uh, so I just want to thank you again um, for sharing your perspective. And I hope everyone was listening carefully, as you said earlier, Esther. Um, we'll pass it on uh, actually back to Michaela. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Michaela Patton, and I am staff with CBE. I am the youth organizer. Um, and I just want to say it's definitely amazing being in this process and here in this capacity because I was also a New Voices Are Rising student all the way back in 2016. It seems so far now. Um, and I remember going up to Sacramento um, and at that time actually advocating for CBE um, even though I wasn't staff with them and really for East Oakland. Um, I was born and raised in Oakland and I've lived in North Oakland, in East Oakland, and now I live in deep East Oakland. And I can fully attest to just the very blatant and obvious inequities, even just from the North and the Hills um, to the flats in the deep East, you know, going from tree cover and urban shade, you know, to areas that don't have any green spaces whatsoever, um, or any type of real air quality mitigations. Um, in addition to kind of like um, everyone said, so many industrial impacts from AB&I, the crematorium, freeways, constant cars, diesel trucks just like parked in our neighborhoods. Um, you know, and community has been fighting for a really long time. And so I just want to say that I am very happy to be in this place. I think it's been a long time coming. Um, I was going to speak a little bit to the historical kind of processes, but I think Veronica um, and Greg did a great job of just talking about, you know, like why we're here. And I always like to remind myself and just remind everyone when I speak that like, we're not here by accident at all. Um, and we're not here by coincidence. And actually, kind of like Esther was saying, we're here for very intentional reasons. And it's because there have been histories of anti-Blackness and discrimination and blatant racism um, that quite literally does not value Black and Brown bodies and Black and Brown lives, like whatsoever. Um, being a youth and being over only 21 doing this work, and seeing like the overall climate impacts and knowing that our communities, right, are already getting hotter. Every summer is hotter, right? It's always hot in the East. Um, and then being able to go to Berkeley or Sausalito or San Francisco and being able to see a completely different like lifestyle, culture, um, and just environment um, really showed me that like we really need to advocate for more and those who are in charge of our health and our lives 
um, because of the systems in place really need to advocate for us also. So I'm really hoping, yeah, that um, East Oakland is nominated and goes through with the 617 process. I think it'll be an amazing process to really decrease air, air quality and also see some real changes in the Deep East that I think community has been waiting for for a very long time. So thank you. Thank you, Michaela. And uh, shout out to New Voices Arising. Uh, for being part of the growth and development of Michaela. I actually remember Michaela at an Air District board hearing years ago, and she was just so compelling. So it's, it's great to have you here again. Uh, speaking of new voices arising, next. Um, let's see here. Actually, you know what? We had a guest who was not feeling well, who was representing communities for a better environment. So we have someone who is going to replace uh, that person. So I'd like to bring now Marika Reagan. Marika, are you here with us? Yes, I am. We hear Thank you. you. Yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Marika Reagan. I am a very, very um, brand new member of CBE. I'm happy to be a part of this conversation. Um, I was born and raised in San Francisco, and due to the impossible rents in San Francisco. I've never really lived there as an adult. I've been living all over the East Bay and I can definitely feel the difference in the air quality. Where I live now on 87th Avenue in deep East Oakland is where I have actually lived the longest in my entire life because as a child we moved every year um, because of the cost of rent. So I have been living on 87th Avenue since 2014. And I think the air quality is horrible. And most people that know me say, oh, Marika's nose blind. Um, you don't smell anything hardly, but the fact that I can smell the pollution here really speaks to how strong it is. Um, I am urging, begging, pleading that East Oakland be chosen um, for the emission reduction plan. It's, we, we need it bad over here because there's some major um, companies over here putting pollution out on a daily basis and people are suffering. And I think, I think the crime is that it's done in a way that is so secret. And historically, if, if you, if you study redlining practices, you'll see our communities were created to keep everything bad out of the um, white communities. So, you know, if you're looking to live somewhere affordable where, where the rent is not um, so high that you, that you can't afford it, um, most likely you're gonna end up in East Oakland, Richmond, and in these uh, traditionally black areas where you have the uh, pollution because we can't, we can't um, keep them out because most of us are so busy going to work, going to school and just trying to survive. Um, a lot of people don't even notice that they're being poisoned on a daily basis. Um, and I feel like that is the true crime that, that our time and, and brain space and focus is so focused on survival that we could be being poisoned with the very air that we breathe and, and so many people don't notice. Um, like I just, I'm just pleading and that, that, that East Oakland be chosen because this is, this is criminal is what it is. It's criminal and it's definitely on purpose. It's not by accident, it's by design. Um, I'm an American descendant of slavery and it is by design that I believe that we are kept in these areas that are being polluted um, to keep um, other people safe, white people safe in their, their upper middle class areas that are kept clean and um, you know, based on how much money you have, if you can afford to not uh, live in a high polluted area. So I think it's racism um, and I think it's criminal. Um, so thank you for listening. 
Thank you, Marika. I want to thank you, first of all, for joining us on such short notice and um, representing communities for a better environment when someone wasn't able to. And also thank you for your courage in your statements. Uh, we'll move on now. I got ahead of myself earlier. I mentioned New Voices Are Rising. I'm really excited about that program and the young people that come out of it. And so now let's pass it to a representative from New Voices Are Rising, Angela Pineda. Angela? Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Angela Pineda. Um, I'm currently a junior at Skyline High School. And I've lived in East Oakland basically for my entire life. You know, I grew up here and I know, I know what it's like to live here. <laughs> and I want to tell you guys a little bit about what I've seen like in the years that I've just, I've been here. So first thing that I've noticed is that the air quality is, sorry, there's also very loud motorcycles driving by my house. <laughs> but um, the, east, the air quality here is not very good, you know from the airport to the ABNI foundry that I live like just a short walk away from, just a few blocks away, to the highways, to the crematorium, and to like also the wildfires. The people here are exposed to so much air pollution and it's, it's so important that we fix this. And driving around Oakland today, you're like, you're bound to come across like multiple communities of unhoused people, like right across the street from the foundry they like they, they don't even have like windows they can close they don't so they don't have any access to air air filtration so what are they going to do to like to protect themselves from the amount of air pollution that gets created by that place also wildfires you know while we don't well, we might not see actual fires we do get the smoke that comes with it and in my neighborhood that smoke just adds to the pollution that's always been here and I remember like, it's like a story, like a couple of years ago when I was in middle school, the air was so bad from the fires that kids were recommended to stay home. Like it was so smoky outside and it, it, it was horrible for kids that had asthma and other respiratory problems. You know, we had to wear masks if we did end up coming to school. And some kids had to go home early due to like headaches because it was just so bad. And if there were better air filtration systems in schools, maybe kids wouldn't, wouldn't have to go home early because of it, because they'd be, they'd be safe. And also that was then, you know, and then now we still have the same issues. We have the Dixie fire, the second largest fire in California's history. We've been lucky, you know, there, there hasn't been much smoke from, from that, but like, plus like with droughts, that means more wildfires to come and also more air quality will suffer. And I also wanted to add that, you know, I said before I go to Skyline and Skyline is located in a very like wealthy community, you know, up there, those houses are very expensive. And compared to the air quality down here where I live, it's a very major difference, you know, like you breathe in the air up there and it's, and it's like, it's so nice, you know, and then you come down here and then it's like you, it's so obvious what the difference is between the air quality up there and the air quality here. And it's it's so important that we fix that. And yeah, and it's also important that the community be included in what measures are being used to protect them. And if people here don't make the decisions, they like maybe the people who are making here don't live here, right? So they might not think about things that other people might think of. So they won't know if they truly worked and like, you know, so that's why we need people who live in East Oakland to make a plan to clean up our air and to like create a healthier environment for people to live here and also the people who come to live here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela. And thanks again to CBE and New Voices Arising in terms of being so consistent in advocating for East Oakland as a Navy 617 community. So moving on, uh, we're gonna speak with Ms. Margaret Gordon from West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project. She needs no introduction. It's been my pleasure, uh, it's the Air District's pleasure to be working with her on a community emission reduction plan. Ms. Margaret?
Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Loud and clear, Ms. Margaret. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. As um, one of the founders and the co-director of West Oakland Environment Indicators and have been working just in West Oakland for over 25 years in relationship to social, social justice and environmental justice. I also had a position on the uh, Port of Oakland Board of Commissioners. Um, there's a lot to be planning around stationary and mobile sources of air quality. And I advise through my, from, through my experience and expertise, you start with your own data. Make folks dis dispute, I'll show you a different functioning of how the data does not relate to your lived experience. That's one. Two, make, make sure you have your partner agreement intact to be able to have co-leadership. Three, be vigilant and persistent on the things that you, that you want to be included in your strategies and action plan. Five, those who you do not, you cannot work with, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with saying we, we do not want this person here. And the last point I'm going to make is that there should be an equitable and environmental justice thread throughout the, your process. And that means that you might end up having to train, orientate, and educate the different agencies to come to your table of how you want to be community engaged, how you want to be um, having that equity that, that gives you the empowerment to confront multiple things at multiple times. So, um, and you have to also be, be expectations of a good, bad, and then different. And how do you resolve when you get to the, the difference and the uh, indifferent? Um, you need to have those things in place. You also need to under, have, understand that you want a, a, participatory, a, a participatory budget so you can understand how the funds that's been allocated to you as a community, you have the sufficient amount of dollars to be ex uh, implementing and um, implementing and expediting your process and your projects and your programs. And even with some of the agency staff come on from different from different um, institutions, you might still have to orientate, educate, give them some skills about with community engagement. So always be, take the high road and being able to explain yourself as, a, as the pre previous speakers from, from uh, East Oakland, you have to continue to be vigilant if you really want to have all the steps in place from your air plan to your implementation. And you constantly need to be supporting your steering committee, your subcommittees on about equity and environmental justice. So thank y'all. Thank you, Ms. Margaret. That's invaluable um, knowledge and wisdom coming from you based on your experience working with the air district on air quality issues in general and specifically AB 617. Um, we've learned- One more thing yeah. real quick, one more. Yes. And if people want to contact me, and let's still have my number, uh, let's still have my number. If you want to be having a more, a more detailed conversation about this 
8617 process. People call me or email me. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Margaret, we can help facilitate that as well. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that we're running all around the region and to all the environmental justice communities. So next we have Bayview Hunters Point represented by Tony Kelly and the Bayview Community Advocates. Tony? Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's no way to follow Ms. Margaret, but here I am. Um, so yeah, Tony Kelly, Development Director of Bayview Hunters Point Community Advocates. Um, I think a lot, of what Ms. Margaret said, is, is important to remember for any organization, organizing, or community that is um, especially going into the 617 process. And since most of us are pre-nomination, I think there's a couple things to keep in mind. Um, one is I think that um, that vigilance and that need to build trust goes really deep because this, this process of AB 617, right, is about to creating an emissions reduction plan that job is just gonna get harder. It's gonna get harder and harder to actually get to reduction of emissions in a lot of our vulnerable neighborhoods. Um, I'm sure other pre-nomination neighborhoods like Bayview Hunters Point, we have development pressures. So there's gonna be you know, increasing um, building of offices and expensive homes, which puts pressure on displacement of our communities that are here and that have been here for decades and generations and want to stay, but also it brings more pollution. So the job gets harder about an emissions reduction plan because now how do you do that in the face of increasing development that brings more? So that's, and that's not just the job, of course, of community going through AB 617, it's the job of BACMED. It's the job of the board of BACMED who are all you know, decision makers at counties in the region, right? And making sure that there's accountability or at least, you know, some sort of honest commitment to the plan and the implementation of that plan at that level is critical because otherwise the danger is that we know what the impact is in our lives. The, the CBE folks talking at the beginning of this were, you know, straight up honest about what the impact of pollution on people's lives. And that's, you know, that's gets magnified because of the pressure of displacement as well. And, and so land use being there as a factor in AB 617 and in emissions reduction plans, I think is really critical because that job is going to get harder as we go through. The other thing, and this goes, I think, to another point that Ms. Margaret raised, is that there's a need for support pre-nomination, um, you know, for organic processes of communities to build capacity to be ready to create this plan in one year. And, you know, not to, I'm not, I can only guess I'm putting a number on it because, you know, we, we, we think about this um, and also as an organization, but it's at least $100,000 a year because it's not just compensating the staff time at the organization, but also the, the community members who are all taking time out from their homes and their families and their lives and their meal times to, to do these meetings. And they should be compensated for their time and their knowledge. So, so it really takes, you know, a commitment of, of financial resources from back men to let these communities, you know, build their capacity, build their times, you know, get some money and get out of the way, frankly, you know, because the committees, the communities need that time to sort of, you know, educate themselves. They know what's going on in their communities, but how to translate that to ways that can work with decision makers and policymakers, I think is critical. So, so those, those two things, I think, um, for the majority of the communities involved in AB 617, because most of us are pre-nomination. Um, I think we just need to keep in mind as we try to build capacity to get closer to creating our plans in future years. And it's also a word of warning to the agency itself or to its board, um, how to manage it, because especially that tension with land use, I think is just going to grow as the years go by. Well said, Tony. Thank you once again for representing Baby Hunter's Point. And lastly, from the community perspective, I'd like to bring on Alfredo Angulo. He's been working closely with our uh, AB 617 process in Richmond, North Richmond and San Pablo. Alfredo? Hey, yo, uh, my name is Alfredo Angulo. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, they, them. Uh, I am one of the co-chairs for the Richmond San Pablo uh, SERP Community Steering Committee. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Richmond and a first generation college student going into my, my senior year at UC Berkeley where I study political science and focus most of my efforts on promoting at least my highest version of the public good. 
Um, I'm really excited about the work uh, being done in Richmond around AB 617. Um, growing up in Richmond, um, like, like a lot of East Oakland youth, uh, I am no stranger to the effects of industrial emissions. Um, like far too many Richmond youth, uh, I've lived most of my life, most of my life with asthma. Um, similar to the comments that Miss Susan made, uh, I used to go to the hospital so often that my family started to call it my hotel. Um, anybody who's raised children with severe asthma understand the toll that it takes on one's ability to do well, not only physically, but mentally. Like, uh, imagine being a third grader trying to learn multiplication when you can't even breathe. Um, so tackling air pollution at, at home is really central to me and, and my community's values. Um, like one thing that we can all wrap our heads around is the fact that every human has the right to clean air, to clean water, to agency over our destinies and our own bodies. And air pollution really limits our ability to experience that, uh, especially for those of us who live in communities heavily surrounded by industry. Um, AB 617 really gives us an opportunity to put power back into those communities. Uh, it gives us a chance to balance the power that industry has held um, over that agency that I speak about. Um, my experience as part of the Richmond SERP uh, has been truly powerful. Uh, you know, I was born in 2000, and we've known since way before that that, uh, for example, the climate crisis is not just a possibility, but that it's right around the corner. Um, We've known that we need to drastically cut down our carbon emissions, um, not only because we're killing the planet, but because we're poisoning, poisoning our people. Uh, we know that kids who experience prolonged exposure to industrial emissions can feel those effects far, far into their lives. Uh, and one of the main reasons, like many spoke before me, that the problems we have here in Richmond are so bad is that the very people harmed by the environmental inequities, uh, primarily back black and brown bodies, uh, have in one way or another been excluded from decision making. And uh, this SERP process uh, is one way in which we can proactively dissolve the legacies of discriminatory policies like redlining. Uh, the community-based work uh, being done by the various environmental justice groups and the Air District um, has the opportunity to be a truly restorative uh, investment in our communities. Uh, we are empowering local leaders and community members to work together towards a better Bay Area. Um, from my experience here in Richmond, I've seen a true commitment to uplifting local voices, uplifting youth voices, and, and let, really letting us lead the way uh, while still providing endless support. Um, one of the things that I, that I think uh, is helping us in Richmond move along a little smoother is uh, to really understand the power that your committee members hold. Uh, as individuals and as a collective, our steering committee is comprised of people who have the common goal of reducing emission uh, exposure, but also come from very different backgrounds. Uh, we have youth, we have lifelong environmental justice advocates, we have concerned moms and grandparents, uh, and, and that diversity is power. There is power in every individual's experiences. Uh, and to be really truly successful, I think it is necessary that we do a good job at uh, helping people realize that power, but then also using that in the creation of this plan uh, to be truly effective and responsive of the community's needs. Um, I mean, I would also say that you have to be open-minded and, you know, really ambitious. Like, I don't think anyone needs to tell East Oakland youth to be ambitious. Like, they know all about that. Uh, and the, the mobilization that it takes to get your community to actively participate uh, is not an easy task, as most of us know, but it's worth every bit of, of effort. Uh, like a couple of weeks ago, the, the joy that I felt sitting down with the committee and just brainstorming our vision for, for a clean air, for clean energy, for access to green space for everyone um, is one I, I really can't compare. Uh, it, it takes uh, true vision to be successful. Uh, so really like put in the effort to build excitement and trust in the process uh, so that everyone is open to expressing their ideas, no matter how far out we, we might think they are ourselves. Um, I'm, I'm excited to work with these Oakland organizers uh, moving forward. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you, Alfredo. 
And thank you to all the community members that took the time out this evening to join us. Um, it's the evening hours, folks have families and other commitments. Uh, so thank you all once again for sharing your gifts with us, your time, your voice, your thoughts, everything. I also wanna say thank you to the leadership at the Air District that made space for community voice this evening. Um, as we see, it's very, very important to hear from community. It's one thing to learn about environmental justice from like an academic perspective. It's another thing to learn directly from the folks who are affected by environmental injustice. So thank you for making the space. One note, um, you heard um, Esther mention chronic, or she said COPD. I just wanna make it clear that that's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease for those who didn't know what she was referring to. Um, and last thing before we segue, I think we can't really do this work in a sincere and meaningful way without including community voice and allowing that space. Um, so thank you all once again. Full disclosure, we're over on time on the agenda. So we're hoping now as we segue into the questions uh, and comments section of the agenda that we can be very, very brief with our, our comments and laser focused and succinct. Uh, we'll have Veronica Eady, our senior executive uh, deputy, our senior deputy executive officer joining us to field questions that are directed to the Air District. And then we'll also have our panelists sticking with us to answer questions or address comments from the, um, from the audience. I'm going to bring my partner, uh, my co-facilitator, Anish Rana, back into this process, and we'll be working on facilitating this section together. Also note that if you don't want to raise your hand to ask a live question, you can ask questions in the chat. And then we will also have the Miro board here that you see now on the screen, taking all the questions and comments and organizing them, recording them for the future. So um, I'll open up the space now to the audience. Folks um, are probably queuing as we speak. Anish? Thank you, Joshua. Um, yeah, is, um, if you'd like to speak at this time, please go, uh, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, also, just want to reiterate, you can submit questions or comments uh, in the chat, and we'll be monitoring those. And um, addressing those, uh, we'll be mixing those in with, uh, with the speakers as well. Um, we have uh, one uh, request, raised hand from uh, Al, uh, excuse me if I mispronounce your name, uh, Al Alvirdia Owens. Go ahead and um, unmute yourself. Okay. Hi, my name is Alvirdia Owens. And uh, I've actually been participating uh, with Ms. Margaret from uh, West Oakland Environment Impact. And I received an invite to this meeting. I have a question, is this East Oakland specific? This, this workshop is for East Oakland Pacific specifically? Veronica, would you like to address that question? Yes, uh, Ms. Owens, if you have a, a question that is um, that applies to this program, but it's not East Oakland, we'd be happy to uh, take your question. No, I just need to know because I'm in the wrong place because I, I got a lot of other stuff going on okay. and I received the invite because I thought it was for the health uh, cohort of the AB 617. Oh, Veronica, may I address this? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So, um, Ms. Owens, I know about the newly formed health cohort. Um, it's affiliated with the West Oakland AB 617 process. This okay. meeting is not is not that, um, okay. but but we we honor your presence. We want you to stay. We're still talking about AB 617 throughout the entire region, so maybe it's still informative for you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Of course. And. Anisha, I noticed someone has their hand raised that is joining us by phone. Yes, correct. Um, if that person would um, like to unmute yourself, feel free. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mrs. Cecilia Cunningham. I'm kind of under the weather, but I wanted to ask this question 
I wanted to know, what is the Air Quality District planning on doing to improve the quality of life for us older seniors? Because we have a lot of respiratory uh, problems, but we need something to be done to improve this. That's why I'm just hoping that the Air District would consider East Oakland as part of the remission reduction plan. Thank you for your question and your comment, Ms. Cecilia. Um, Veronica, do you wanna um, address that question about what the Air District plans to do to improve the health uh, and air quality for um, East Oakland, uh, the elderly population in East Oakland? Yes, Ms. Cecilia, thank you so much for uh, calling in and letting us know that you support um, the designation of East Oakland as the next um, AB 617 community. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail about the program. I covered a lot of that, but um, what we are hoping is that bringing together community leaders, um, scientists, engineers, uh, public health people, that we can put together a good plan for reducing emissions in um, East Oakland and focus on um, the most polluting sources. Um, AB 617 is an interesting um, statute because it is on its face, it's not really geared toward health outcomes, but I would say that here at the Air District, the work that we've done, um, the spirit of AB 617 is, does rest in positive health outcomes. And so with all of the changes, the challenges in East Oakland, um, it makes sense that it would be the next place where we could focus and bring um, you know, the resources that we have. Um, since you are, you know, largely interested in um, public health, uh, it's really important that we have our public health partners at the table as well, like um, the Alameda County Department of Health, the California um, Department of Health, um, the State Department. Um, and so we hope that you will um, participate throughout the process, whether it's being on the steering committee itself or coming to some of our public meetings, but your yeah. input is really important. I'm sorry, I, yes, I interrupted I'm, you. Yes, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm That's a part okay. of CD. And oh, I've been are. working very diligently trying to do all I can to uh, take back our community because we're gonna have to do something, something yeah. to improve the quality of life for our seniors and everybody. Well, I'm glad you're a CBE member and I look forward to uh, working with you uh, through this process um, if we uh, designate um, East Oakland. So thank you for calling in. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cecilia Cunningham, even though you're not feeling well um, for attending and, and sharing your thoughts. I wanna bring attention to a comment that's in the chat. Um, this is from Mercedes Rodriguez. I know Mercedes from um, her work in leadership uh, in the West Oakland AB 617 process. And if you don't mind, Mercedes, I'm just going to read off your comment that you left in the chat, share it with the audience. Uh, she says, I am on the AB 617 steering committee, transit, bike, and walk uh, subcommittee uh, for West Oakland. I did not realize the need for AB 617 in East Oakland. I am in support of AB 617 in East Oakland. And Mercedes, did you want to, let me, I can't see the hands right now. I'm trying to get there, but did you also want to address this gathering? Okay. Perhaps not, I don't want to put you on the spot there. Anish, anyone else? Yes, uh, we have one more question that came in through the chat uh, from uh, Luis uh, Caro. I'll uh, go ahead and read that. Uh, I noticed this type of work overlaps with SB 1000. Will those efforts be combined with this? So I would welcome Veronica to field that question or perhaps pass it to a staff member or leadership at the Air District. Uh, yes. So the question was about SB 1000. Um, I want to call on um, 
somebody on our um, planning staff. I know, uh, Wendy, good friend, I know that you're here. Um, do you want to take this? Sure thing, Veronica, I'm happy to. Hi, I'm Wendy Goodfriend. I'm from the Air Quality Planning uh, Division, and I can talk a little bit about SB 1000. So what we're doing is when we have uh, local governments, either counties or cities that are developing SB 1000 environmental justice elements for their general plan or infusing environmental justice throughout their entire general plan, which is another option, we're working to coordinate with them to make sure that where we're working in local community with local community, that our, our work is aligned with what the city is planning and what they're planning to do with community members or engaging community members around those environmental justice elements. So as we find out about them and as we make connections with partners, we are uh, working to sync up and synchronize efforts so that they're mutually supportive. And so we're working with the city of Oakland on their general plan update and their environmental justice element so that we can sync that up with the West Oakland work and with the East Oakland work. So hopefully that answers your question and you can reach out to the Planning and Climate Protection Division or through Veronica and we can help answer any additional questions you have. Thank you for that, Wendy. Um, so I saw the order of hands. I saw um, Catherine Finez, your hand raised, Ms. Margaret Gordon, you're next, but then I noticed Ms. Mercedes Rodriguez um, is trying to address uh, this gathering. So Mercedes, were you able to figure out how to unmute yourself? And if not, we'll keep working on that with our assistants and then circle back to you. One more yeah, she, she looks like she's unmuted, so it must be something te technical. Okay, we'll give some time to work that out. Thank you, Veronica. Let's move to Catherine. Catherine? Okay, hi. Um, so, uh, hi, I'm Catherine Funes. I um, work for um, New Voices Are Rising. I've been um, supporting our youth around a lot of this AB 617 mobilization they've been doing. Um, I'm wondering if you could um, provide some more clarity on the role per the AB 617 legislation and program requirements that polluters take in this community process. Um, and added to that, I, I've seen by proximity, not through involvement really deeply in the Richmond process, but um, Chevron is a very big polluter and has been involved in that steering committee. And I, I can see that that at times has been um, frustrating for community members. And I've been in spaces with AB, with, um, uh, AB and I Foundry folks, and I've, I've seen how they talk to community members, what they think about the air quality problems you present them with, um, how they treat our students. Um, and I'm just wondering how, um, so I guess two parts. What AB 617 as a whole says about the role of polluters and then what learning lessons from West Oakland and Richmond, the air district can take in terms of, of not having a lot of these, these problems that um, polluters often present when they're in community building spaces. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. Um, I'll answer the first part and then the second part, um, maybe we can have somebody from West Oakland if Miss Margaret is still here um, or we can unmute uh, Mercedes, um, but so um, the statute, AB 617 statute says that um, CARB is supposed to consult with um, a whole range of stakeholders that include community members, um, community-based organization, public health, and it also talks about um, industry stakeholders. So CARB took that language from the statute and incorporated into their blueprint, which I talked about earlier, um, to provide a state of a, a framework statewide. And so their framework calls for these community steering committees like we've had in West Oakland and we have now um, um, in Richmond. And so in um, our implementation through that blueprint, um, and I think across the state, um, the model has been for um, industry to be on the community steering committee. And most places in the state, um, 
you know, they have one or two, uh, depending on the size of the steering committee, but they have industry members on that steering committee. So in West Oakland, um, there were industry members on the steering committee. Richmond is a little bit different. And I do want to underscore that our approach here at the district is to really um, approach the community for its own uniqueness. So um, we knew, um, thanks to the community going into Richmond, that it wasn't going to look the same way that it looks in West Oakland. So, um, and it doesn't look the same way that it did for the first steering committee that we had for the monitoring plan. So in Richmond, um, we had a group of advisors called a community design team um, who helped put that steering committee together and they took that uh, the names of the applicants and things to our board. Um, and the way things ended up is that we have two industry people on the steering committee in Richmond, but those two industry people do not have a vote. So um, it just varies um, from community to community, I would expect, and I'm not, you know, we're looking for guidance on, on what East Oakland is going to look like. Um, it would be interesting if Miss Margaret is still on or somebody from the Oakland steering and committee. Up. I don't know why you don't see somebody don't see it. Okay, good. Well, I'll let you talk. I see you now, Miss Margaret. I'll let you talk about West Oakland and how you got there and how it works. Okay. First thing first, West Oakland has been doing its own air monitoring for over 10 years prior to anybody talk about SBC, uh, AB 617. And that uh, we had a ongoing period, uh, ongoing pro uh, engagement with staff of, of Bay Area Air Quality to build that relationship and that trust. But at the same time, at the same time, as a community and an organization, you have to be, uh, none of this is, uh, to, to be much more clear, none of this is like top line. You put let it swell up and eat it when it cools off. It's nothing like that. There's nothing um, that is going to be such a pace of overcoming the things that y'all are worried about. Y'all y'all have concern issues. It don't work that way. And you guys, and you also part of this process. You got to learn how to speak modeling. You got to learn how to speak monitoring. You got to learn how to speak research. You got to learn how to speak engineering. You got to learn how to speak uh, planning. You got to learn how to speak enforcement. Y'all have to learn how to speak all these things as you go into this process called AB 617. So I'm gonna try to get you to clarify your, your mind, mindset and focus. It is all about you, the East Oakland community, being abreast of equity in your plan of actions or strategies. And what and how do you include equity and environmental justice? That's your part. Okay. That's your part to empower yourselves to do this. Now, on the question of the AB 617, that has Nothing been signed off to say the who, the what, the how, the where, when is going to start being engaged in AB 617. You got the staff from the city, the planners, some of the planners have never worked on as part of community engagement, never had, don't know what environmental justice is. So SB, uh, uh, SB 1000 is, is almost, uh, at this period of time, is a statue and it has no frame, it has no structure, it has no pathway, uh, pathway, it don't, it's, it's just there for right now. And I think people are going to have to be uh, uh, pushing the envelope around ensuring that environmental justice is a genuine and authentic thing once the uh, the uh, the Oakland 
general plan has enough teeth in it that it can carry over for multiple generations. I was, I am a, a one of the original people from West Oakland participated in the general plan 20 years ago. And that, and to me, as prior prosperity, being having the housing issue um, met, and also um, how equity has not been utilized by the city of Oakland, and, nor environmental justice. So this is the first time, okay, and um, as I close out, this will be the first time that in my 20 plus years of being in our city hall, confronting directors, line staff, division heads at, at, uh, at, the, at the city of Oakland, they are clueless, clueless how to engage and use environmental justice. So one of the one of the responsibilities that look like they either have to break in a consultant, give them some training, orientation, some skill sets, how to how to utilize the environmental justice principles as part of this process, or they need to be they need to contract out with West Oakland Environmental Indicators who have been doing this for over twenty plus years and including people from East Oakland. Hear that, Ms. Margaret. Thank you very much once again. Let's try Mercedes Rodriguez one more time. Hey, can everybody hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you, Mercedes. Go ahead. Oh, you're welcome. I just wanted to let everybody know that I've been on this AB 617 from the very beginning. I think it's going on two and a half years now. And I was very impressed that all of the ideas that I brought to the table were taken into consideration. We had people from all groups and all walks of life working on AB 617. The steering committee is made up of some wonderful people and we're doing great work. We meet two or three times a month. We've been doing this for several years now and it's a wonderful process. So this is something that East Oakland will definitely benefit from, and I'm very confident that we in West Oakland will achieve all of our goals. We're working toward um, getting involved with other organizations so that all of our strategies can be realized, and this is something that East Oakland is, in, is actually trying to accomplish, and I support them in their efforts. And I love this process. I'm really excited to be a part of it and there's a lot of people in my community that are suffering from health issues and i know that i'm part of the solution to it so thank you very much okay thank you i'm so glad you were able to, to get through mercedes thank you for sharing that perspective. thank you joshua you're welcome all right so as i mentioned before we're slightly over time um so Thank you again for all the comments and questions. You see, we have them recorded and we'll be studying them later on. Um, thank you also to Veronica Edie for providing the answer in the chat and uh, providing her con your contact information as well. So moving forward, we're going World Cafe style. Um, we're gonna go into breakout rooms. It's a, kind of like a choose your own adventure format where you'll be able to select um, which breakout room you attend. Uh, you can actually attend all three. You can go to one twice if you want a deeper dive. Uh, we'll also have space in the main room. I'll be sticking around here in the main room for folks who uh, need to take a break or choose to you know, not go to a breakout room through one of the three rotations. I was going to take a little bit of time to describe the breakout rooms. Uh, so you know what, let me go ahead and do that and I'll keep it super brief. The first breakout room is centered around the idea of the program plan, the AB 617 program plan itself. Just talking about the different elements of the plan and what elements would be specific to that, that you represent. We have the ability to mute. We're working on that. The second breakout room would be capacity building. 
So what do we mean by that? We're talking about uh, enhancing communities' ability to learn and function in the, the realm of air quality, um, understand stationary sources and technical aspects of the, the public health issues. And then also on the flip side of that coin, we're building capacity here internally. The Air District staff, uh, as Ms. Margaret just kind of touched on, we don't know everything and we need our capacity to be developed and built by the community members who are participating in the, in the program. The third breakout room is understanding community. Um, you know, Air District staff uh, sitting down with community, understanding, um, you know, their lived experience, the local air quality challenges that are specific and unique uh, to your region uh, and just improving our view of um, what your community uh, looks like on a micro level. So those are the three breakout rooms. And where do we go from here? Is it choice time? Here we go. So again, choose your breakout room. The first rotation would be approximately 20 minutes. Um, it'll be a discussion and we'll have a facilitator there. Um, also, we'll have a report out at the end, hopefully. And it looks like we are starting to jump into our breakout rooms. Take a look at the chat for a recap of uh, the description of each breakout room. choose? Say again? How do we register our choice? Can we get some technical support for uh, Jill Ratner in terms of choosing the breakout room? Of course, Jill. There should be a, a pop-up on your screen. There's a window that should allow you to select breakout rooms. If you don't see that window and you want to just send which number you'd like to go to first in the chat, we'll be happy to place you as well. Thanks. Sure. So Jill, if you have to verbally- If you don't you see your name, what do you do? Uh, let's see if I can see your name, Miss Margaret. Hmm. I got you. Uh, where would you like to go, Miss Margaret? There's capacity building, program plan, deeper dive, and just getting started. Getting started. Okay. I think I can do that. There you go. Jill, how are you doing? Um, I'm wondering if you could please put me in the capacity building room, please. Sure. Come on now, I've got it. There she goes. Um, someone has their hand raised. Can you unmute yourself? This is the main room, by the way. Five one zero five six zero. I'm sorry, five six eight zero seven nine four. Can you unmute yourself? I wonder if that's Mercedes. Was that? I thought I recognized that number. It probably yeah, is. Yeah, because I think she called and she. Oh, and Mercedes is still in here. So. Okay. Yes, I'm going to go to the to the um, program plan. Yeah. Program plan. Okay. Thank. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, she's sent. Um, hmm. Yeah, I see Mercedes still here listed by name. Mercedes, do you, are you in here or are you on by your phone? 
So I, I was in message with Mercedes earlier and she wasn't able to mute and unmute herself on the computer. So she also joined on her phone. Oh, her right. phone may be in a breakout room. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Place it at once. Sure. What about, oh, Anne, you unmuted yourself. Would you like to go to a room? Oh, okay. I just was able to join. So what is being discussed in the breakout rooms? Uh, what was that um, I could recap that for you, Anne. Um, okay. One second here. Okay, so the first breakout room is loosely described as the program plan. So just describing AB 617 and all the different elements of that plan. Um, and then basically just seeing where your unique community fits into the AB 617. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm um, in Tri-Valley. We already have um, a grant and everything. So is this an appropriate use of my time or is this mainly for people just learning about AB 617? I, I definitely think this is, this is appropriate for you. Um, you can choose one of these breakout rooms and then we'll go on a rotation as well. So there are three breakout rooms and we'll be spending about 20 minutes in each. So maybe just test the waters. Uh, sure. One of these breakout rooms. Uh, the next one really quick is capacity building. So just uh, the Air District providing technical support and other uh, air quality related support to each community. And then also the Air District uh, building capacity in terms of like learning how to work better with community. And then the last breakout would be understanding community. Um, and, you know, just kind of like really diving deep and at a micro level, understanding uh, the challenges and unique circumstances of each community. Okay. Send me into a room then. Into any room? Okay, I'm gonna think about it. you're coming from Tri Valley. You already have a grant. Uh, okay, I'm taking you into capacity building. Great, thank you. All right. Okay. All right, so you're in the main room. We have about a dozen people here. So these are for folks who didn't want to go to a breakout room. We can have an organic discussion here. We do have representation um, from our technical support who will be writing your comments down, recording your questions. And um, if we're lucky, we'll have time to, to share your perspective in the breakout room with the greater group when they return. So uh, not forcing anything, but if you want to, uh, chat and talk about 8617 or anything else, just feel free. Joshua, what time do people come back to the main room? Um, I, you know what, Veronica, I apologize. I didn't think to record like the time. Did you catch it, Anna? Um, yeah, I think they have about 13 minutes left. And okay. then they're going to come back. We're going to do a quick report out. And then they're going to pick another room to go in. Oh, uh, OK. Again. Yeah. Thanks for taking note of that. And uh, um, in terms of the report back, I saw the idea floated that we would cut that part. So we're going to keep that now, right? Um, hang on. I think we're keeping it just a brief one for the first. Let me see. OK. Um, so I believe, I think we should confirm yeah. when we, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, cool. I think she's trying to communicate with us. Is she? Okay. The um, <laughs> omnipotent presence that Mona is. Um, that's a pretty even distribution in the yeah. breakout rooms. Uh, the most popular is grant and capacity building. Yeah. Not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I guess other folks are probably just, you know, um, on but multitasking. So yeah. you doing okay? I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. Yeah, Veronica, how are you doing? I know you had yeah. a super early start, but you're smiling. Looking I know. Flower. It's you. delirium. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. Good, good. <laughs> so you 
But I think it's a good, I mean, you know, I'm pleased with how things are going. Yeah, me too. I think so. Um, I think, um, you know, the community members were so honest, you know? Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Dr. Tompkins in the main room. I see he's here. Dr. Tompkins, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Did you want to go to a breakout? We can do that for you. No, that's okay. Oh, I have a question. Yes. For you and Veronica, when's the report coming around? The report is ready. I'm just dealing with the uh, printer right now. And once I get the proof from them, we'll do the same thing we did last time. I'm going to send it to you and you're going to get the final um, kind of like uh, approval before we send it okay. to one more time. So we're, we're right there. I got Jack's signature on the letter of support. Um, and so we'll be turning that around to you next week. I think they're gonna be done with it next week. Okay, thank yeah. you, appreciate You're it. You're welcome, yeah. So we just need your time to look it over thoroughly. I don't know if you wanna bring your team in, Dr. Garrett and uh, Dr. Ramona Tasco, perhaps, um, to take a, you know, go through it with the fine tooth comb one more time. Uh, before we send it to print. Oh yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll have all uh, the editor. It wasn't Dr. Garrett, but it was another um, editor. I'll have her review it to make sure. Yes, sir. Her last name was Garrett, but they're not related. Oh, interesting. Small world. Small world. A little synchronicity. Never heard anybody. Okay. Well, thanks. I'll just mute myself and uh, be quiet. Okay, if you don't choose a breakout room this time around, it's probably winding down now. Definitely feel free to choose it in the next uh, rotation. Question, maybe Veronica can answer as well, if she's available. Oh, she just stepped away. I'm here. Oh, she's, oh. She can, she's an earshot, Dr. Thompson, go ahead. I just turning the light on. How do you handle or how in this process stakeholders are being addressed in, in, in a participatory process. Since uh, I'm a teacher, I've taught there, I work in, the, in Bayview, I have family that live there, and I did live at one point, so I consider myself a stakeholder. How are we considered as a part of this? Or what, what is our role? Because I was told on the advisory group that there you have to be a resident, not a stakeholder. And I've been doing participating for 27 years from the uh, advisory board for the clinic in the San Francisco Health Department to do an independent research in both DLC and particulate studies, and as well as with the district. Are you asking? Seven are you asking about the Community Advisory Council? Yes, ma'am. So the board has directed us, or the board has made the determination that um, members of the CAC should be residents of a disadvantaged census tract. Having said that though, there are other questions, I believe on the questionnaire, uh, the application that ask, um, you know, if you, and, and don't quote me because I don't, I can't remember exactly what the wording is, but there's an opportunity for you to say, oh, I, I work with this group. So, you know, if you're, you know, working with a group in uh, Baby Hunters Point or wherever it happens to be, there is a place on the application where you say that you work there or go to school there or, or whatever it is. But the committee has said they want to prioritize people who live in a disadvantaged census tract. Okay. okay. Yes. yes. As, um, with that definition, and there are representatives, as you were discussing in the meeting, from, uh, from Chevron sitting on these committees. So, well, that's Dr. Tompkins, that's, that's different. That's the AB 617. Uh, steering committee and on those we there are sometimes industry people it depends you know we have that in, in Richmond 
but the community advisory council is a completely different thing and it's not governed by 8617. Oh, okay. So there won't be any industry people on that. Okay. How, for example, when we did the, uh, when I was on the citywide asthma task force and tracking, for example, Carver Elementary School in Bayview, many of the faculty who transferred out of Carver, their asthma symptoms dissipated once what they were in another part of the city and some teachers committed state. How is that import or how does the district plan to include these members of, of the community that work and participate in there other than just attending a meeting and voicing your opinion? Well, all I can say is, you know, this is a board thing. And so I, you know, we are limited by the limitations that the board has put it, you know, given us. So if the board says this is the way they want to do it, then there's nothing that we can do. Um, but if you want to reach out to, you know, for example, the chairs of the equity committee, Davina Hurt and Tyrone Jew, and, you know, give them your opinion or come to the next meeting, um, which won't be until September, um, you know, that's probably the more effective than, you know, talking to us on staff. Okay. Okay. Uh, when in September will that meeting be? So they meet on September, the first Thursday in September, which I think is the second. So the board, we have a board meeting on September 1st, and then on September 2nd is the committee. But the board isn't going to take that up until after, you know, it goes through the committee. Okay. But if you All wanted right. to come to the board meeting and express that at the board meeting, you know, you could certainly do that too. I'd, I'd go through chain of command and and the opportunity to do a little bit more uh, longer dialogue with the members and then go to the board if necessary, if I'm able to. All right, thanks. Okay. And everybody. Dr. Tompkins, I'm glad you had this opportunity to address those questions with Veronica, um, you know, just being in here organically, but I do wanna encourage you um, to join the breakout rooms in the next rotation, I think, um, it's mutually beneficial, like for the folks in the group to hear from you and then you to also learn from what's being discussed in those breakout rooms around 8617. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. And if you have some trouble making it into a breakout room, I have the the uh, the tools to kind of manually send you to where you want to go. Okay. Appreciate so, your uh, assistance. Of course, of course. Take care. Yep, take care. Uh, Anna just took a little break, so feel free to do the same, Veronica. I'll, I'll hold it down here. I mean, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, so anyone in the uh, main room with me right now? Um, again, we do have the capability to record your comments or questions that you may have, even though you're not in a breakout room. Uh, so feel free to, um, to engage if you, if you feel the need to. We have two minutes left before everybody else comes back. All right, thanks for that. How are you holding up? You doing well? Who's that? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, it's Maria from Interamica. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I was joking with Anna. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I had to put my glasses on. <laughs> yes. I'm a contact wearer. Um, I don't think I've ever seen you with glasses. I don't think you have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I've been up 
well, no, have I been up this late with you um, for a meeting? Oh, yeah, I have, but um, yeah. it's and it's going to be a late one. Uh, I don't know that we have much. To, I don't think we have a role, huh? Um, so. no, um, okay. Hang on, let me look at the Miro. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Do we want to report on that or just? No. I know we're in time, so yeah, let's if we can get away with not reporting back from the main room, I definitely want to yeah. take that opportunity. Yeah, get back yeah let's let's do that and give the breakout people, um, the breakout groups the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, I think they should just say what they want to say. Hello, this is Lisa popping in and just let them say what they want to say. I don't think we should try to record anything. So the breakout computer? rooms are closing now they're going to be back in about 20 seconds um when they are back uh maria will stop sharing screen and then i'll i'll just pee you guys in the chat when we're ready to go on the next one so let's see how fast i can do this <laughs> thanks mona thanks lisa yeah thank you all Bye. hey eleanor i think you're on mute we can't hear you thank you thanks michael Hi everyone, I'm Eleanor. I work with the Air District's Community Engagement Office and I'll be facilitating this session. I know some more people are joining, but we wanna go ahead and dive in because we have a lot of good information to share today. So thank you so much and again, welcome to this session. So today we'll share some information about a resource called the Bay Air Center. And we'll also share an overview of our new community grants program. Um, we'll be hearing, um, asking you all about what resources would be useful for you in your community as well. So again, my name is Eleanor, and uh, two of my colleagues from the Community Engagement Office are also here today, Anish Rana and Brian Butler, and we're joined by Michael Flagg from the Meteorology and Measurements Division, and then Michael Anthony from Interethnica will be helping with our technology. So thanks, everybody. Um, it's fantastic to have you all here. So let's dive right in and talk about capacity building for a bit. So earlier you heard Greg Nudd talk about building shared capacity and folks have been mentioning it throughout our workshop tonight. And so a couple of key themes rise up for the Air District, a piece of capacity building is helping to build community knowledge around air quality. And it also includes building Air District capacity to work in communities. So we wanted to start off by asking all of you in a few words, what does building capacity mean to you? And if you feel comfortable, you can put your answer in the chat. And thanks, Brian, you can see that discussion question here. In a few words, short and sweet, what does building capacity mean to you? And if you feel comfortable, you can just put an answer in the chat. If you aren't able to use the chat feature, go ahead and raise your hand and we will um, make sure to, to look for that in our queue as well. It's okay to be shy, but if you can, in a few words, what does building capacity mean to you? Talked about knowledge and grants and leadership. Any brave souls? Does anyone want to verbally share? Great, thank you. Education, so building capacity. Thanks, Cheryl. Building capacity can really um, have a focus on education, right? Thanks, Danielle. Adding staffing, skills, and funding to get the work done. I love that. Anybody else in a few words, what does building capacity mean to you? Thanks, Jill. Strengthening community members' confidence in their own knowledge. And Kevin, preparing community to leave, to lead. Great. So feel free if you have additional things, you can um, pop those in the chat. Um, at this point, we'll move on to the next slide and just um, look at a little roadmap for this breakout session. So we want to share some information about capacity building efforts at the Air District. And we will share time after that for um, some questions and large group discussion. So without further ado, I'll turn things over to Michael Flagg to talk about the Bayer Center. 
Um, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give a, a quick um, overview about an upcoming resource that's going to be available for communities, uh, members of the public that are interested in, in air quality issues. Um, the Bay Air Center is a, a third party kind of multifaceted resource center that's funded by the Air District um, that can provide a variety of services and resources to communities interested in building capacity around all types of air, to air quality pro uh, topics. So, you know, identifying pollution sources, accessing air quality data, um, how to um, design a monitoring study or interpret data um, or do different kinds of data analysis. Um, this, this could include training, presentations, development of fact sheets or guidance documents, um, or be um, project specific um, in terms of technical support. Uh, the Bay Area Center is designed to be dynamic um, and can kind of change or adapt to fit specific community needs. Um, for example, the Bay Area Center will be, be uh, available to provide quick, like one-time support on answering specific questions around an air quality question or provide more specific um, ongoing assistance and technical support for longer-term projects. Um, we're in a pilot phase of this of this program right now. We're currently working to get the Bay Area Center officially up and running, um, and we look forward to hearing what types of resources and topics are most needed and how the Bay Area Center can uh, best provide that information to you all. And so is, are there any um, quick questions about any of that basic overview um, um, that, that, that anyone has for me right now? Michael, are you the Hi. only one in this room? Hello, yeah. You're the only one here? Oh, no. Um, Sorry. Uh, we, we have <laughs> quite a few people, I think. Oh, yes. I don't know why I'm only seeing you. OK. <laughs> uh, sorry to interrupt. Carry on. Oh, no, I was just um, opening it, opening up the conversation if there's any quick questions about the Bayer Center overview that I just gave. But if there's, if there's not any further questions, um, I can bring in uh, Anish to talk about the James Carey Smith Grant Program, which is another resource opportunity um, that also supports community capacity building efforts. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass it off to, to Anish and there'll be time for questions at the end as well. And as we pass it over to Anish, I wanna draw everyone's attention to the chat as well. Um, I know there is a lot of information that Michael just shared. Um, the Bayer Center is, is a new resource that we're really excited about. And if folks have questions or if you want to um, be informed of future developments about the Bayer Center, feel free to reach out to this email address that you can see. Um, it's at the bottom of the slide on your screen and then it's also in the chat. So the email address is bayercenter at baqmd.gov. Um, and again, we're really looking forward to um, having a discussion with you all later about uh, this resource and, and how it can serve all of you. So just wanted to mention that and now over to Anish. Thanks, Eleanor. Yeah, um, we're really excited to announce that the Air District will be releasing um, new guidelines and a call for proposals very soon for the James Carey Smith Community Grants Program. Uh, we're in the very final stages of preparing the launch. So um, please look out for uh, that notice uh, coming out soon. Uh, these grants are meant to help support and fund projects that will increase local participation in efforts aimed at improving community environmental health. Uh, the maximum amount for an individual grant is 100,000 per year. Uh, Multi-year projects are possible through this program with the potential of up to 300,000 in funding over three years. We have we have uh, two informational webinars scheduled soon in on August 31st and September 16th, where prospective applicants can learn more about the program and ask questions. Um, and the deadline to submit applications is 5 p.m. on October 1st, 2021. Uh, and for more information, you can visit the link listed here on the slide or email, email us at communitygrants at baaqmd.gov. And with that, I'll, uh, I'll hand it back to Eleanor. Um, in, unless there's any kind of any more questions about this. 
Thanks so much, Anish. Um, did anyone have any um, questions about the general information that Anish shared? Again, I know we're moving pretty quickly here. These are just little um, almost teasers to get, get you your interest peaked. Any general questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any at the moment. Um, and again, we have an email address for this effort as well, um, communitygrants at baqmd.gov. And so, um, as Anish was saying, um, please keep an eye out later this month. Um, that grant opportunity will be posted, and we're really excited to get the word out to organizations throughout the Air District's jurisdiction. Um, so, uh, seeing no further questions, um, what I'd like to do now is um, really, we want to have a, a discussion about the capacity building that you all are, are interested in and hoping for. So we'll switch over to our group discussion. And I apologize, I do see a hand. Um, Anne Brown, it looks like your hand is raised. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> hi. Um, I'm wondering is, will the Bay Air Center have actual educational curriculum? Because part of our outreach is to offer teachers curriculum that they can use to teach about air quality and what students can do. Will that be part of the center? So, you know, the, the Bayer Center is, is like this a multifaceted resource center, right? So part of that, the part of those resources are intended to be like static documents, whether it's like informational fact sheets or um, different trainings. Um, you know, a specific curriculum for a school is, is something that we're thinking about, but you know, there will be um, those types of informational resources available. Eventually, we're working on um, developing a website for the Bay Air Center that will house all of those resources. And so if you're interested about, you know, um, providing information about certain air quality topics to teachers and things like that, you know, there will be there will be similar type of information um, that, that, you know, will be provided in terms of um, those like kind of resources for getting people trained on certain topics. Great. Thank you so much, Jan. That was an excellent question. Thanks, Michael. Um, so now let's switch over to um, some of these questions that you see on the screen here. So um, thanks again to everyone who's responding to the initial chat prompt, um, building capacity. What does that mean to you? I think that helps set the stage for what we're looking at this evening. So for the next um, six or seven minutes or so, we'd love to dive into these other questions. And so first up, we have this question about what resources would be useful for you and your community. And we're really eager to hear, um, you know, what's on folks' minds as you think about in the context of all we've heard this evening, um, we hear about all the need, we hear about um, all the existing information and certainly opportunities to build on that existing information. What resources would be useful for you and your community? Um, and so, if, if you feel comfortable, feel free to take yourself off mute. You should be able to just take yourself off mute. Um, or if you prefer, you can raise your hand, you can drop your information in the chat. Um, and if, if you are so inclined, if you could introduce yourself as well, um, we would love to hear from you and, and just get this conversation going about what resources would be useful for you in your community. Any thoughts on that or any, any requests, dreams? Do you want us to raise our hands or should we just speak up? You can unmute. I think it's a small enough group. You can just speak up and thanks, yeah. Okay, so I'm in Livermore and we do have a grant and uh, our two biggest um, air quality polluters are transportation and buildings. And we do have hot afternoons here, so um, I would love to see how more energy efficiency in buildings can be made available to lower income residents who mostly live in apartments in multi-unit buildings. So um, is there a way that landlords can be incentivized to do building efficiency because they're not paying each unit's utility bills? My impression is the 
tenants are paying those utility bills, which can be astronomical, especially when there's smoke events and everybody has to stay inside and keep their windows shut. And not everybody has air conditioning or air purifiers either. So those are concerns is how to make access for low income residents if landlords especially are not interested or cooperative. Thank you so much, Anne. <clears throat> Great to see you um, on Zoom. And so um, we've just opened up this mural board here. It might be, the font might be a little small, so maybe we can zoom in in just a moment um, and capture some of this. You can see in the top blue rectangle, um, this, this uh, information that came in at first in the chat, right, about what does building capacity mean to you. And now as we look at what resources would be useful for you and your community, um, um, I think that's an excellent point. So um, transportation and, and buildings, um, looking at energy efficient upgrades um, and, and energy efficiency and, and how that impacts the air quality all around us. Great. This is sort of a, a follow-up to Anne's question or it's along the same lines or kinds of resources that that we were talking about. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that our students are working on in the, the year to come is the whole, uh, is a focus on resilience hubs and uh, finding ways to make buildings that have some sort of a common purpose or, or public purpose like schools or uh, housing developments, affordable housing developments more resilient and more uh, more able to to uh, maintain a healthy a healthy environment during things like smoke events um, and you know one of those one of the the issues really is being able to ensure that um, that the electricity stays on and so finding ways to to have to add to clean energy resources, um, you know, installing solar, whatever that, you know, and also finding ways that when the grid is, is weakened, it's possible for key facilities to just disconnect and maintain power during, during those kinds of events so that things like um, air filtration can actually work. <laughs> um, and so, you know, information about that or the opportunity to explore some of those, uh, some of those possibilities with folks uh, would be really helpful, I think, to our students. Thank you so much, Jill. And I know your organization has been represented tonight, but do you mind giving us a little introduction as well before Sorry. we move over to Ken? Sure. Sorry about that. Yeah, my name is Jill Ratner and um, I'm, the Senior Program Advisor for the New Voices Arising Program at the Rose Foundation for Communities and the Environment. Thanks so much, Jill, for the comments and for joining us tonight. And then over to Ken. Hi, Ken, good to have you here. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, Ken Suchu from Citizen Air Monitoring Network. Oh, uh, do I have my... Um, one, my question is, um, what kind of help we can get from pollution inventory, because as we heard earlier, a lot of the plan uh, from AB6 and team is based on the inventory. So um, what kind of help we can get in that area? Thank you. Sorry, I'd like to uh, interrupt for just a second, just to let everyone know that there's two minutes left in this breakout meeting, but uh, feel free to continue. Great, and thanks, Ken, for your question. Um, either Michael Flagg or Nish, um, do you have anything to, to share with Ken or should we get back to Ken outside of this breakout session? I think, I mean, I think that's something that the Bayer Center will be, can, can help. I think one of the things that we're trying to do is, is provide, you know, ways for people to access information and emissions inventory is one of those things. So we'll be thinking about that. Uh, I think more specifically, um, it's, what is, can you give a little bit more detail, like 
we know like PM is one and VOC is the other one. I think right now we are not necessarily need more information, but it's like more, I mean, we need to gather data on the ground. So um, is uh, Bay Air Center the resource we, we should looking up to, or we should, there is, uh, or if that's not under your plan or your, your radar, then probably we need to uh, uh, pursue some other resource. So I, I guess that's the first thing I'd like to uh, clarify is, is that, of course, you, I mean, you mentioned um, it's going to cover a lot of things, but I'm sure you have priority. So if this is not on your priority, then we probably should go after some other resource. Thank you. Thanks. I know we're about to break out of this breakout session and I see Rainey's hand up, but we'll make sure to connect with you, Ken, and thanks everyone for joining us. Okay. Just a quick note to say, oh, and he looks like maybe he left the breakout room, but the, um, the understanding community uh, breakout would be a good fit for Ken's question, but I'll, I'll connect with him separately. Oh, great. Thanks so much. Um, and again, thanks everyone. We didn't get to our last question formally, but um, really appreciate all the rich input. Thank you so much. Welcome everyone. Just give it maybe another minute or so. I think we have a full 20 minutes in this room and I know sometimes it takes a moment for people to um, arrive and get situated. As you're joining, um, you should be able to access the chat function. Um, so go ahead and just type into the chat however you would like to introduce yourself, whatever you would um, like the folks in this room to know, your name, where you're coming in from, any, anything you wanna share. And I will go ahead and start sharing my, oh. Zoom just went away. There it is. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen as you're introducing yourself um, with the folks in this room. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Kristen Lai. I'm with the Community Engagement Office at the Air District. Um, I'm joined by a few colleagues. We have Dan Ulrich, who's with our Meteorology and Measurement Division, uh, Christy Riviere. Are you, what are you consider? are you considered the exec, are you with the exec division or the exec office? Oh, you're on mute. Uh, yes, technically, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then we have Greg Nudd, who you all met, uh, one of our DAPCOs. And um, we also have um, Bjorn, who is working the behind the scenes to make sure that notes are are um, being captured, and she's um, she's with Interethnica, so she's kind of working behind the scenes. So I'll go ahead and um, share my screen here. So just to make sure that you entered the room you were hoping to enter, this is the program plan deep dive. So we will um, just dive a little bit deeper into, um, into uh, Greg's presentation. So just really quickly, the objectives for this World Cafe is, you know, for us to continue sharing you, sharing with you a little bit more about the program plan. So as Greg said, you know, we're really um, trying to pivot toward a, um, a more regional approach rather than this sort of geography by geography. Um, and also to hear your immediate reactions to the program plan. Um, we really want to hear from you about um, you know, which parts of this program plan are most exciting to you? What parts do you want to engage in the most? Um, and then, as was mentioned by Josh, this is a real opportunity um, as we're looking forward 
um, and forward facing with AB 617, you know, how can we improve this program um, moving forward? So as a reminder, oh, I'm getting an echo. Can I ask everyone to mute if you're able? Okay, that's better. Um, okay, so so this is just a reminder of the the flower um, and flower petals of the of the program plan. But you know we've all been kind of sitting and listening to other people talk for a while, and we wanted to open this up for you to ask any clarifying questions before we jump into the larger discussion. So you may raise your hands um, using the, the hand raise feature. Uh, you may chat um, questions, but this is just a few minutes for all of us to kind of get on the same page in terms of what we know about the program plan. So if there are any specific questions you have about the program plan, and I can go back to any of the future slides. Um, I'm pretty sure I can zoom in if needed. I know that the gray font on the gray background may be hard to see. So just let me know how I can make this um, accessible. So someone with the phone number ending 0794, you can go ahead and unmute yourself, ask your question. Okay, I just want to ask, who is the author of AB 617? Who's the author of that bill? Christy, I think you're on deck to answer questions. You want to answer that? Or Greg? I, yes, I can answer it. It's Garcia. It's, uh, it was, yeah, it was Chris, Christina Garcia. Christina Garcia, and it passed in, in the statutes of 2017. Thank you. Any other clarifying questions? And where is, bill, oh. where, where is that bill right now? It's already, it's, it was, uh, it was uh, approved. It's in the currently in the statutes of 2017, meaning it was approved in 2017. So it's part of the statute now. Oh, okay. All right then. Okay. It's it's, it's been approved completely then. Right. You right. Have to, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Really, really great questions. Um, and thank you, Christy and Greg, for responding. Any any other questions for clarification about the program overall before we before we jump into discussion? See a chat open here as people introducing themselves. Okay. All right. So we'll just we'll move along. Of course, you can ask questions at any time. We just really wanted to take that pause because I know there was a lot of information shared. So I'm going to go ahead and um, show the the questions here, um, and then we'll open up the Miro board for you um, to follow along. So first in chat. We wanted to do a poll, um, but we found out that you can't do polls in breakouts. And so here's our, our workaround. If you could just open up your chat, if you are calling in from your phone, you can um, just kind of holler it out. But if you can just type into the chat, which of those elements most excites you? And so in other words, you can think of that as, you know, which one are you most excited about working in for your community? And I can go back to the flower petal here. So you have build shared capacity, understand community, share your community story, support community decision-making, plan solutions, take action and evaluate progress. So you can just go ahead and chat that um, to us, just you know, list out the one that most excites you. Plan solutions. Plan solutions, I got plan solutions. Um, also got planned solutions in the chat. Anyone else want to share? Understand community. Thanks, Mari. So feel free to keep chatting at us which of the elements most excites you. Um, I'll go back to the, the questions here before opening up plus one for planned solutions. So yeah, y'all can follow along. Um, Ernesto is down for all of them, but plan solutions and taking action are crucial, agreed. Um, let's go ahead and keep chatting at us. So the questions that we'll be discussing are, you know, just what are your immediate reactions to the overall program plan? This is something that we've been doing a lot of thinking around and we'd love to hear from you about your reactions. Um, what do you think your community would need in order to co-lead with the Air, Di Air District, one or more of the program elements? 
And then finally, is there anything missing that could be included in the next iteration of the program? So how can we make it better, in other words? So those are the questions. I'm going to move us to um, I'm going to move us to the so many whoa so many bells and whistles here. I'm going to move us to the um, the mural board. So just like we were already doing um, in the larger room, we now can do here. And so Beyond is behind the scenes and will be typing up your responses. Um, she's already been adding your um, chat responses, so keep those coming in. We'll move on to this next question. So what are your immediate reactions to the program plan? Go ahead and raise your hand or chat. You know, we're here together, so please feel free to um, raise your hand and share. I just got a notification that we've already, we're already down to 10 minutes remaining. anyone want to share by raising their hands what are your immediate reactions to the overall program plan and i see that the phone number ending in 0794's hand is up did you want to chime in again or is it still up from the last time i just want wanted to say this i think the over the over um raw program is good, but we gonna have to have more input. Can you can you share a little more about that? Did you say we okay. um, input? Uh huh. I wanted to say that um, as a community, we all gonna have to chime in and uh, voice our opinions and what we feel mm -hmm. that should be uh, priorities in this program planning. And personally, I feel that we should, first of all, try to uh, get East Oakland to be part of the readmission reduction plan. That's my concern. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Anyone else want to share your immediate reactions? Um, Ernesto, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm glad to to hear some of the reactions from other Oakland um, environmental justice advocates like Ms. Margaret Gordon uh, around environmental uh, the environmental justice element, and it's good to see Air District staff and also Diana here, um, who I've seen in the Healthy Development Guidelines space um, with the City of Oakland. And I know that there is going to be a, a, an SB 1000 EJ element developed within the City of Oakland, and I'm wondering how um, you how as agencies you can work together to ensure that this process, if the, when the nomination moves through, um, is prioritized as part of the development of um, the EJ element. Whoever the, the planning department chooses to really lead that process on behalf of the city, I think they definitely need to turn to the leadership from the steering committee, the organizations that are doing this process in East Oakland, as well as what's been done in West Oakland, to really have that reflected as part of that plan. Thank you for the that that question, um, Greg. I saw you unmuted yourself. Did you want to Did you want to respond? Uh, just, I'd, I'd like to ask a follow up question for Ernesto. Mm -hmm. do, do you know the timing of that? I I know that there that the city of Oakland is currently in that process. I know we joined uh, part of the RFP for one of the applications. It didn't move through for us. So I don't know, if, Deanna, if you know more about where the city is in terms of their selection of, uh, of, of whatever entity they're going to have lead that process.
Thank you for that. Um, and then I see another hand raised, Hakeem Johnson, and then we'll maybe move on to the next question. Sure, I think for me, I, you know, I was excited to, to know that the community has a better opportunity of educating itself um, on air qualities and exposure and emissions. And, you know, given the ability to, to really find and, you know, find out where those sources are and educating folks on how to um, improve and reduce. I, I, I like that aspect um, because there's, there's so much that, you know, that, you know, communities don't know, um, right? They see industry, they see vehicles, but, you know, there's, there's also so much that may be, um, that is, that's, adding on to exposures that, you know, that, that are able to, to truly hone into within this process. So um, that's my initial reaction to the program. Thank you for that. And um, I just wanted to point folks to, Greg posted a comment, um, you know, directed at Ernesto, but if folks are curious, um, there's a response in there. Um, okay, so we'll move on to the next question. Um, we have five minutes remaining in our room together. So um, before they kick us out of here, um, what would your community need to co-lead one or more of the program elements? So as we're thinking about some of the, um, the capacity building, some of the work that we need to do as an air district to be better partners, um, what, what, what would your community need to co-lead one or more of these program elements? And I see, um, Ernesto, your hand's up. Did you want to respond or is it still up? Um, I have so many windows open that it's hard for me to know if it's a new, okay. Um, I see in the, the, the chat box, um, the word power. I don't know if you want to elaborate a little bit on that. And is it Margina? I'm, I'm probably saying your name wrong. And I, I apologize for that. Um, I just meant that uh, there has to be you know, the community comes uh, without the, sometimes without understanding all the dynamics between the industry that has more influence and has more power. So the question is, how can some of that power be transferred to the community so they can have a stronger voice when they're sitting at the same table? Great point and great question. Um... Does anyone else have anything? So I, I see Ernesto added resources, decision making, and money. Ernesto, when you when you say resources, um, do you want to share what you are there any any resources in particular that you want to make sure we we capture on this board? Yeah, I think I've, I've voiced this in the past with the Air District. Um, but things like support with monitoring, uh, maybe some technical expertise here and there that, that might be required. Um, with decision making, you know, of course, there's the steering committee model, but ensuring that uh, the community can have a real voice in, um, in, the, in the decisions, as well as pushing forth some actual uh, like emission reduction strategies, whether it be like saying we want to push forth with a rule that we want the air district to, to strongly uh, move forward within the board process. And then money. I know Tony mentioned having at least $100,000. I'm so sorry. I do not mean to interrupt. I just want to let you all know that we have about less than two minutes until we move out of this breakout room just to wrap up any last comments and thoughts. Thank you. All right. I'll wrap mine up real quick. But Tony mentioned at least having $100,000 a year. Uh, I agree, but that should be even more given the, the scope of work and uh, having enough community at the table and making sure that we can we can support them as they engage, especially during this pandemic, which has had such a grave impact on people's ability to provide for themselves and their family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for um, for elaborating and um, and sharing a little more. Um, so I'm going to move us. Um, thank you, Beyond, for keeping us on track. So um, I'm just going to move us to this last question. But you know, feel free if uh, you have a comment or a question that's related to any of the other um, areas that we've been talking about. You know, just you know, we can we can go back and forth. So, um, but this one's this one's important. I mean, they're all important. But is there anything missing, or or what can we what can we be improving as we're moving forward um, in our program planning? And again, you can feel free to raise your hand or in the chat and. Um, I see that 0794, I'm sorry, I don't know if I caught your name. I apologize, I keep just saying your phone number. I saw that your, uh, your hand is up as well. Oh, we're getting the, the notification that our breakout is ending. So any final comments in the last 20 seconds from anyone? Feel free to drop it in chat or, or just unmute yourself and call it out. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Hello, everyone. Um, we'll maybe just wait another 10 or 15 seconds or so to see if uh, more people join. It looks like there's about 50 unassigned participants. Okay, let me just wait a little bit longer and then we'll we'll kick this off. Okay, so in the interest of time, I think we can just go ahead and get things started and then as people trickle in, they can just join this conversation. But um, hi everyone and thank you for joining uh, this breakout room. Uh, my name is Chris White. Uh, I work in the Air District's Community Engagement Office and I will be facilitating tonight's World Cafe discussion on getting started. Uh, so the purpose of today's activity is to hear and learn directly from you all about your community, on your lived experiences uh, and also provide the opportunity for Air District staff to answer any questions you all may have. Um, so kind of to quickly recap before we get started, um, the AB 617 Community Program Plan uh, offers the opportunity for district uh, for the district and residents uh, living in, in communities impacted by higher levels of air pollution to work together. Um, so the uh, what we're calling the community centered program uh, plan uses a seven point focus process. So if you remember earlier, Greg was uh, reviewing a slide that had he referred to it as like a flower, with little petals around it. So uh, uh, the four 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 zero eight zero three is Mercedes. Oh, thanks, Mercedes. Um, and so that um, that seven point process uh, is used to build shared capacity and also uh, create a community focused and driven action plan, um, to help address uh, air pollution inequalities. So before we do jump into today's uh, World Cafe discussion, um, I did want to introduce a few air district staff that we have. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Let's flip that script. It should be the community be community members being acknowledged first before the staff. Uh, yes, Ms. Margaret, but uh, in the interest of time, we only have about 20 minutes available. For I don't care. As we're going to do environmental justice, the community get to speak first. Can you hear me? I'm on the phone. Yeah. Is that Mercedes? I'm on the phone. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I'm on the phone. The the number is four 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 zero eight zero three. Okay, great. Um, I can hear you, Mercedes. And so um, with that, I'll keep going through um, the intro for today. Um, I did just want to mention that we have a couple Air District staff available to- Yeah, answer. we have. No, I'm going to say it again. Okay. On the environmental justice principles that you guys should understand, the community gets to speak first. So, Ms. Margaret, let's. Would, would you like everyone on the call to introduce themselves? Would that be helpful? No, I would like that the community, if you get to speak, that be able to uh, introduce themselves first. That's what I ask. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Why don't you start with you, and then we'll um, just go. No, you start first. with the people from East Oakland first. Okay. We don't. If someone is from East Oakland on the call, could you go ahead and introduce yourself, please? And and maybe we could start by looking at all of our faces. Can we do yeah. that? Um, can we? Uh, sorry. Carissa, I, I think this is Bill Martin with the Air District. If we can go to um, a view mode where we can see everyone in the breakout room, is that possible? There you go. Thanks, Deborah. That's awesome. Yeah. So go ahead. Hi, I'm Margie, and I'm in East Oakland. I'm not in Deep East, but I'm in East Oakland, and I'm a member of CBE. Great. Thank you, Ms. Margaret. You're welcome. Who would like to go next? Jump in. I can't see your names. I'm going to help Chris out. So how about Luis? I can see you. So would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Luis. I don't live in the East Bay or Oakland. I live in San Francisco. I'm here with San Francisco Planning. Um, we're working on an environmental justice framework, and I'm here just to observe and to advocate for the eastern side of San Francisco that experiences a lot of disparities, EJ disparities. So yeah. That's wonderful. Ms. Margaret, did you want to introduce yourself? Is that, is that all the community? Who is EW? E-W-E-N. Oh, yes. I think those are, um, can you unmute yourself? E-W-E-N, we can't see your name and introduce yourself. Oh, they left. And um, I know we have Mercedes on the phone. Yes, I'm on the phone. Do you want to introduce yourself, Mercedes? I'm Mercedes Rodriguez, and I'm a part of the AB 617 for West Oakland, and I'm proud to be a member of the steering committee. Thank you. Miss Margaret? Miss Margaret Gordon, one of the co founders and the co director of the West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project, and also part of the co-leads partners with Bay Area Air Quality that supports support the steering of the process of our strategies and other related things, Great. such as uh, planning for the steering committee and um, how do we uh, to uh, continue to interject environmental justice, community engagement, and equity in, in this process. Thank you, Ms. Margaret. We have two uh, jurisdictional planners. I see someone from Alameda County Public Health. Maria, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Maria Dominguez. I also go by Maria. I work for the Alameda County Public Health Department and their Health Equity Policy and Planning Unit. I was born and raised in East Oakland. I'm currently living in Contra Costa County, but I spend at least half of my time still in East Oakland. And our new office is off of San Leandro. So we go right through for using San Leandro um, by the ABI and you know the deep east over there. So it's an honor and privilege to be here. Thank Welcome. you. And then one more, Deanna, I see you're here. Hi, thank you. My name is Diana Perez Domensic. I'm a planner in strategic planning at the Planning and Building Department at the City of Oakland. Um, I was uh, originally from Mexico, but uh, Oakland's been my home for a long time. I currently live in Oakland. Thank you. We have two interpreters with us, um, Filipino Tagalog interpreters. I don't think we need to introduce. And then I'm just gonna introduce, so we can get to hearing from you. I'm just gonna uh, let you know who's in the room from the air district. And I'm gonna hand it back to Carissa after I do that. So you have Phil Martin, Kate Hogue, 
Carissa White, Miriam Torres, and myself, Wendy Goodfriend. So I'm gonna hand it back to you, Carissa. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, Deborah, if you can pull the slides back up. Um, I think that we can just pass it over to Phil, who uh, is gonna go over a couple of um, slides. Yeah, thank you, Carissa. And I'm Phil Martin. Um, I've been working with the Air District for many years um, on often technical issues, but also very much focused on um, community um, community air pollution. Um, so what I, I, I just want to frame a little bit and thank you, Miss Margaret, for um, for putting community first. Um, I just want to frame what we mean by getting started. This, as Chris mentioned, was the um, understanding community petal on that flower, if you were here when Greg presented. And, and getting started, you know, we certainly recognize um, and, and want to acknowledge the comments from Esther and Michaela uh, from CBE that um, community have been fighting um, for a very long time. So getting started, what we mean by getting started is working with the Air District specifically on AB 617 related um, project to, to and, and, and not just the, the nominated or the designated communities, but working um, for all the, the most burdened communities in the Bay Area. So in this World Cafe, what we're wanting to do is um, hear your ideas on how we get started. We have some ideas of our own that we'll share briefly. Um, and we, we wanna spend most of this time this evening is you know, trying to um, identify additional ways and making sure that um, the ideas that we have are reflective and supportive of um, what the community's focus is as, as we move forward. Um, so next slide. So um, each of these bullets are, are some of the um, products, and these could be documents, these could be data sets, um, these could be, uh, these could be, you know, brief communications or lists about, um, that, that help us to kind of come to a, a shared understanding with the community about how we're going to approach and what our priorities are as we, as we move into action and trying to speed the pace to action. So as I said, even before designation or, or nomination, um, these are things that we wanna do with, with all the priority Bay Area communities. And so identifying as, as, um, as Greg and Veronica said, is you know, the Air District is not the one to draw the boundaries uh, we, we need to work with the community to, divide, to uh, develop the boundaries for, you know, what's the area we wanna work in? What's the description that we have of the community that, that reflects um, kind of the depth of understanding there of the lived experience, um, including, you know, um, the, the history uh, and, and the things that we wanna preserve of the community when we go forward. Um, Ms. Margaret, you made a really good point about um, you know, having data sets and, and trying to make sure that we're kind of on the same page you know, with the Air District's data sets, with any, with any community data sets that we share the information about uh, air pollution, about the emissions inventory that we have. Um, either measurements of air pollution or modeling data sets, and what are some of the health outcomes that we see um, that are associated with air pollution. And then um, making sure that we are all understanding what is going on right now, what the existing efforts are, both um, from a compliance and enforcement perspective, but also what rules are being developed both at the state level and um, at the local level that, that may be useful for, um, for getting to action? And what are the grant and incentive opportunities that are available or that are underway? Um, and, um, and, and what are the plans that are in place? There's planners here tonight. What are the policies? You know, so that we're all on the same page with, with understanding community. And so um, with that, I will... Um, I will hand it back to you, Carissa.
you're muted. Thank you for uh, bringing that to my attention. I did want to just pause right now and see if anyone had any questions about the material that um, Phil just reviewed. Okay, so it looks like we don't have any questions. Um, so we have gathered a few discussion questions that we teed up for today. Um, and then we also just wanted to open up this conversation to hear directly from you guys any feedback or comments that you had. Um, you know, you, please use the, the raise hand function or the chat box if you don't want to a comment. Um, Miriam and Kate will be monitoring those. Uh, we'll also be using uh, mirror boards today to capture all the feedback. Uh, so that's going to be managed by Deborah from Interethnica. Um, so we only have about five minutes left in this world cafe. Um, so I think we can go ahead and kick it off with the first discussion question. Ms. Um, Margaret, did you have your hand raised? Yes, I did. Okay, Ms. Margaret, I can open the floor. Okay, Gen genuinely uh, on this list that we have of participants, Margie Lewis is the only one here from the community. Y'all, we should be listening to her live experience and her understanding of the four questions. The staff here from Barry Air Quality should give her all the time to speak about this. This is not, this is right now, Barry Air Quality do not have a real relationship, a signed relationship as a partner agreement with CBE. So as what, only the one community member here, all these questions need to be answered, uh, answered, by her, nobody else. Well, I, 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 I we certainly want to hear. Um, we certainly want to hear from her, and 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 maybe we'll see if there's comments right now. But if if there's other comments, we I I want to hear them also. Everybody else on his uh, uh, field is from the from the air district, so that's not fair. Miss Margaret, let's let's let Margie. She can unmute herself if she feels like sharing. We don't really want to call on people to share if they're not ready or able or willing. But we're we're here in the Q and A portion. Let's so, ask her. Yeah, anyone can unmute themselves and share um, their thoughts on any of the questions we posed or anything else. So please, with the few minutes we have remaining. If any of the community on this call, Ms. Margaret or Margie or Mercedes, please, please share with us your thoughts. Okay, first I want to say that we in um, CBE have been working for many years under the burden of the poor air quality, the toxic air quality in East Oakland. Many of the staff members that I have worked with for years who are longtime residents of East Oakland have many serious health conditions. As I said before, I don't live in Deep East, although I was working in Deep East for a while uh, with the staff members. But even in my East Oakland area, not Deep East, I found that many, many of the young families with children who move into East Oakland, meaning my neighborhood, who are fine. And then within the year, they're all going to their pediatricians and they either have pre-asthma or they're diagnosed with asthma. And as we know, air doesn't sit in one space, it moves and we've got the trifecta between all the horrible um, industry, A, B, and I, the crematorium, and 880. And it is, you know, a toxic soup that people are breathing. And so when we went to the um, health meeting, uh, and we've, we've gathered lots of stories from community members in Deep East who all have you know, one version or, or another of very difficult health issues. And then there is the community health group, Roots, who also, you know, monitors and sees people with all these various, you know, respiratory issues. And so 
along with this process, one of the things that I know we all want is to see we've got to move up the timeline. We know we're living and breathing toxic air in general, and now compounding it are the wildfires, uh, which are affecting everybody. And so it's just, you know, it's like compounding interest on your credit card. It just keeps compounding and compounding and compounding. And so we know this. And so it would be good to find out what kind of data is needed. What do we need to do to push up the timeline? Because, I mean, people are, you know, the clock is ticking on people's lives. And so that's what I would like to know you know, what can we do about this timeline? Thank you. Thank you for your, um, your comments, Margie. Uh, I think we're just about to wrap up this um, breakout room. But I just wanted to say uh, thank you guys to everyone who came and participated. Um, if you would like, you can rejoin this breakout group uh, again, and we can continue this discussion. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> So it says it's giving them another 30 seconds. So we should start seeing people pop back in now. All right, I see you, Anish. Welcome back, you all. We're just waiting on everyone to return from their breakout rooms before we get started with the next segment. And I'll reach out to our technical support. Should I assume that everyone's back now? Yes, everyone is back. Thank you. Okay. All right, I hope you enjoyed the first breakout and hopefully it was very productive. We're gonna go lightning round report backs. Um, I'm gonna call on my colleague Anish first to report back from his breakout room. Anish? Yeah, thanks, Joshua. Um, our breakout room topic was capacity building. Uh, we have roughly around uh, 18 or 20 participants in our breakout room. Uh, we had conversations about a variety of things, including what capacity building means to them and their communities and what resources like the Bay Air Center and James Curry Smith Community Grants, um, the Air District can, can provide that their communities will find useful. Um, participants expressed interest in using the Bay Air Center to strengthen uh, their community's confidence in their own knowledge. Um, and we received several questions about um, uh, what the Bay, what resources the Bay Area Center could provide, especially around educational curriculum on topics like air quality, uh, and if those will be made available to the community. All right, thank you, Anish. Next, I'll bring in Christy. Thank you, Josh. So our breakout room was the program plan deep dive, and we had, I think I saw about 13, 14 folks in our breakout. And in this breakout room, we talked about the program plan and the various elements. And we asked a few uh, questions, the first of which, uh, what element most excites you? And folks are, of course, very interested in planning solutions and taking action. That was the primary area of interest, but also some were also interested in better understanding their community um, in terms of air quality. And then the other actions we asked about immediate uh, uh, discussions points were, what is your immediate reactions to the program plan? And some folks thought we needed to get a little bit more community input, really have a, a thorough engagement process to uh, ask folks how they feel about these different program elements and how they can get involved. Um, we also asked what the community would need to co-lead one of the one or more of the individual elements of the program plan. And it wasn't surprising to hear people want resources. They want decision making, money, and power. They want to be able to, you know, really like, have an impact in their communities and make sure these plans are powerful and make a difference within their communities. Uh, let's see. I think that was all we got to. So I'll pass it on back to you, Josh. Sounds thorough, Christy. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you, Josh. So, Wendy, let uh, can you let Marjorie Lewis spill, spill, speak? Since she was the only community member there, let us speak. 
One, one second, Miss Margaret. The way we built this out, we wanted to have our um, designated report back person just give a quick 90 minutes. We're already down on time. Okay, well, you're disempowering the community by doing that. You dis you're not practicing environmental justice by letting the staff speak for the community, whereas this is supposed to be about community engagement, not the staff engagement. I hear you. Okay, so, Wendy. Um, you were in the breakout room with the person that Ms. Margaret is referring to? Is that we correct? Were, yes, we were getting started understanding community and we spent time introducing ourselves and we did have, uh, I think, Margie from East Oakland. And when we went to the Q&A, we heard from Margie about East Oakland. I believe that's your name. I'm sorry, I, don't, I should have written it down about East Oakland and the need to get to solutions and actions as fast as possible. And um, that's my report out. Okay, if we can make the exception this one time, I know you're volunteering her, Ms. Margaret, but would you like to report out? No, um, yes, I do like to report out. If this is about environmental justice and equity, the community has primary voice in this process. They I shouldn't, that. I yeah, right. that. that's all I'm just saying, that's all I'm saying. And it should not be speculated or led by Bayer Air Quality because over there was only two people in my that group from a community this impact was uh, was Marjorie Lewis and myself. So how yeah. I'm just not understanding y'all's logic about having the staff having a premier part of this discussion. Ms. Margaret, I hear you. I agree with you. We're going to take your feedback and improve our process. My question to you earlier was, you, inv you invited Margie, right? But is Margie willing to volunteer? I want to address her directly. Margie, would you like to do a report back? I'm happy to. What I Please. said briefly to the group was that I am not a resident of Deep East, I'm a resident of East Oakland, but that I've been working with CBE for many, for several years, mm -hmm. and that a lot of my colleagues and staff people and CBE are very impacted by the poor air quality there, which is a product of AB and I, the crematorium, 880, the horrible toxic soup that we all, you know, breathe in. And I also said that in my community, which again is East Oakland, but not deep East, I have noticed over the years that young families that move in, what they have young children and within the year, those young children are going to the pediatrician and they either have pre-asthmatic conditions or they have asthma disproportionately high. And mm -hmm. then I said, and now compounding that is the wildfires that we're all subject to. And we know that air doesn't just sit in one area, it moves. Mm -hmm. And so since we know, and we have in CBE in East Oakland has been working for many years and, and trying to gather data. I want to know what we need to do. What kind of data do we need to gather? Who do we need to give it to because we have a where it's a it's a ticking time bomb. The same thing that we know with the climate issue, it's a ticking time bomb, and we can't keep allowing the community to be to be suffering under this. So that's why I said, what can we do, and how fast can we push up the process for the solutions for the community? Thank you very much. And Ms. Margaret, thank you also for guiding us in this way. A wise person once told me true intelligence is measured on how agile and adaptive you can be. So let's consider that. I'm going to make that call to Eleanor, Kristen, and Carissa. Those are the facilitators of the breakout rooms and also to Anish, Christy, and Wendy. Why don't we go back into this next rotation and you all can work out who's actually going to do the report back for your respective rooms, okay? All right, so with that, let's go for our second rotation. Um, you can either choose a different room, new content, new participation, or you can go into a deeper dive in the room that you were just in. It's your choice. And again, I'll be here in the, the main room and we can still record your comments and thoughts. And don't be shy about volunteering to record out. 
just wanted to share that I can't join a breakout and it's saying that they're going to close in nine seconds. So I'm not sure. Where do you go? Uh, program okay. plan. I don't, see <laughs> I don't even see you. I think we can still make it happen, right? I, oh, wait, here we go. Here we go. They opened again. Thanks. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right, Miriam, are you good now? I can't see the box either. I want to go to room two, I think. Who's speaking? Is that Jill? RG. I, I can't see it either. <laughs> all right, if you all could just be patient, we're here to help you in the main room here. I'll help you, Jill. Where do you want to go? No, oh, you're on mute. Throw me into the plan. Plan? OK. Uh, I'll put you in program plan. All right, see you in a bit. Hi, this is Marcy. I'm one of the interpreters and I was originally sent to a room and I got brought out of the room. So I don't know if you where, put me wherever you need me. I'll send you now. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Margaret. Um, do you want to go into another breakout? Yes. Okay. Which one do you want to go to next? Uh, which one were you in before? Getting started. Okay. You want to go program plan deep dive? Yeah. Program? Okay. Program plan. Let me find Thanks you. Thanks for that guidance, Miss Margaret. Yeah. Let me put you in program plan. All right. I think I got you. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. Anyone else in the main room who needs assistance? Maria. Hey, Maria. Do you want to go into a breakout or are you taking a little break? Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm just hanging out right now, doing a little multitasking. Okay. Good to see you all. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Marcy, I'm not seeing the ability to move you on my list. Joshua, are you seeing Marcy on your list to drop in to a room? Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like. It looks like she's I see Marcy, yeah. She's in the program plan deep down. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. So could you send me there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anna? This is Sandy Tagalog interpreter. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the main room right now. Mm. Okay. Do we yeah. have a person who we, oh, go ahead, Annie, I'm sorry. I, I don't uh, know. I'm gonna ask Mona if she Yeah, knows. I could see some people are like being moved too, but it's it's slow on the movement, but they are, they are there on <clears> my end. Sandy, which, which room were you in last time? Sandy looks like he's now in room three. Okay, you moved them already. Okay. And so is um, Florian, so that's perfect. And Mandy and Monica and Lenny are also in that room. So it looks like we've still got our language pods together. Uh, I'm also I was okay. in this, oh, this is Mandy. I was in the same room as uh, Monica um, Winnie. Mm -hmm. we should on, on my end, you all are all, you're all showing in room three. So let me try to bump you again. Sorry about this all, I don't know. Where is you guys are working magic? Yeah. Okay, I think everyone's where they're supposed to be. Ariana? Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> we can go to room, if I'm ready. Okay, I think they're all good now. 
If you scroll through the breakout room assignment list, anyone who's showing gray on the move to or assigned to, they're in limbo. But I think we've settled it all. So thanks for that patience. So are we an empty room? We just have a few people. I see Keenan. I know some of you have heard this before, but just want to reiterate that in the main room, you're still able to provide comments, ask questions. Um, we're lucky to have uh, some of our leadership here from the Air Districts, Anna Lee, and of course, Veronica Eady, who you've heard from already. Um, we can record your questions, uh, and if there's time, perhaps we could even report back. In the future, i.e., I gotta give you guys my hard bop jazz um, playlist that we could we could have had that going in the background. I was just thinking, what can I pull up so quickly? But who knows what'll happen? So I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. I know if I didn't use a real record player, I'd bring I'd bring my music in here right now. <laughs> Still have that, huh? <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. There's certain jazz records that you just have to listen to that way. Hello, <laughs> now you're talking my language. Yeah, I I don't know how, but I'm like exclusively into jazz from like the '50s and '60s. Mm -hmm. Um, so like Art Blakely and the Jazz Messengers is like my favorite. Of course, anything Miles, Lee Morgan, and Trump. Uh, so Miles is, I'm in love with him. <sighs> I guard into Miles. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it next, for the next one for sure. We'll we'll put some tracks in. My son's a sound engineer. He can take care of that for us. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you say you're a collector, a record collector, Lisa? I, I, yeah, I am. Um, definitely. My husband is too. We have a whole wall full of records. Storage um, is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I've outgrown mine. I see Keenom here and I just want to say hello to him because I feel rude not saying hello. Hey Keenom. Hey, <laughs> I was just doing? <laughs> I was putting my kids to sleep, so I missed the breakout room. Thanks the same though. Oh, would you like to join one? They're, they're still going. They're still going. Oh no, they're, they're I still have kid duty, so I'm gonna oh, okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for multitasking, I, uh, You're the best. Hi. But I figured been... you were multitasking, but just wanted to say hi. Yeah, no, from what I caught, is a really exciting AB617 session. It's well put together, well designed. Thank you, man. Hey, Kim, um, it's Mona here behind the scenes. Good to see you here. I saw your name. Wanted to say hi. Yeah, you know, you're always where you're, you're always at pivotal places. I really appreciate you, Mona. Thank you. I appreciate that today. <laughs> It's been a long process, but uh, yeah, Mona and her whole team, they're just like amazing partners to work with. Um, 
And I can say the same thing for you, Kino. You're you're an absolute genius and a pleasure to work with. Oh well, there's all mine. Second, Joshua. Thank you. And by the way, Kino, I got something came in my inbox about fall ball. Um, no, oh yeah. Ball. Should I I'll forward that to you? Yeah, let me let me know. The kids are are up for it. They both want to play ball. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. actually signed them up for next summer for the Giants baseball camp too. They're both so excited about baseball. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Or I better go tuck the kids to bed, but um, good luck with the rest of the, the presentation. Thanks, man. Good night, Thanks, everyone. Take care. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. So, Joshua, I don't know if you saw my chat, but it looks like our third round is going to be a little over 10 minutes. Um, so, it'll be a power round, so the space for closing. I'll, I'll keep you posted on exactly the time okay, <laughs> we'll um, after I, this share out. I feel bad. I just noticed the time. So am I hearing that we're not going for a third rotation now? I think we could go for the third rotation, um, but it will be kept to about 10 minutes. Oh, um, so right now we're about 8 o'clock. We've got about 10 minutes left here. 710, 720, some share outs. Veronica will be speedy on the close. <laughs> And I'll share some information in the chat about the announcement Kristen wanted to make and all of that. So we'll just let people know, like, go in there and give your last thoughts and comments. Um, and they could always leave more in the evaluation survey, I guess, right? So Sounds good. And I'll um, get everyone ready for going over 8 o'clock. So, or, sorry, um, wait a minute. No, we're good. 8.30. Okay. 8.30, yeah. I'm feeling the effects of the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mona, there's a that was my dog. Number. Mona, there's a message in the chat. A couple messages. You want to um, capture them in the comments for the main room. I think it's kind of nice. It's one um, participant helping another one out. Well, I'm I'm not seeing those. Are they? I see them. Thank you for this opportunity. The bottom window. What yeah, that's that? the one helping the other. I can't I can't see the box. And then somebody else, you know, tells them where to go. Yeah, I don't know if we're attributing comments, but the one that is at the most recent one, thank you for this opportunity, is from a planner in the city of Oakland. Mm -hmm. so that's, um, yeah, not sure if we're attributing, but um, yeah, it's, it's nice to hear that comment. Because yeah. they're on S7000, so. And yeah. got it on the board. Sorry, I almost broke my headphones there. <laughs> Thank you. I want to stand up at my desk, but I'm scared if I hit the stand up, I might move a wire and something. Oh, we, so I'm like in this awkward position right now. I totally like strangled myself before with my earbuds. Too. <laughs> Forget that they're on. Joy, I see you here. Um, we are in the third, our second round of breakouts, um, and the other two interpreters are in the third room. So I don't want to throw a wrench in it. So I'll keep you here for now, and then in the next one, I'll keep you with the language group if that's okay. Um, thank you. Plus. Any guesses on how many of the three report backs are from community members? Um, Mona, you need to move Joy into the same room that uh, Sandy's in because Sandy's going off in one minute. He's at the end of his 20 minutes. I, I moved her. Thank you. Sorry. I didn't know sure. if you heard. All right, I did that. Thank you. I'm sending out the warnings like 30 seconds early for this one. So hopefully that wraps us quicker.
You might have to talk to me here, Joshua. I got up at 4.30 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was, uh, I was concentrating on your text message. Uh, so we were talking jazz, and I, I like almost exclusively love jazz from way back in the day, right? But there's one, there's one exception I wanted to share with you. There's a, a guy named Robert Glasper. So he's a, a modern jazz musician. Um, and also kind of like adheres to that old hard bop era, but with a, a new twist. So he has a lot of experimental stuff. So I would stay away from that first and look to his straight ahead trio mm -hmm. productions. So yeah, look him up on YouTube, uh, Robert Glasper. He has an album called In My Element. Okay. Yeah, if you look up In My Element, you're gonna love it. And you're getting a thumbs up from Jay Howard. On that oh, word? Uh, it's, 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 <laughs> that's my guy that's my guy yeah. and lisa if you start to fall asleep just go on mute because we don't want to scare people with snoring the bear <laughs> <laughs> i had to already throw the dog out because she was snoring and i didn't want you to think it was me <laughs> no, i'm sure even the snoring sounds good with lisa <laughs> there you go yeah. i do everything with rhythm joshua <laughs> I believe it. I, mean, I got a little backstory of how you've been raised with the music. It can't be any other way. Oh, yeah. You got that from one of them, huh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's the way it has to be. My son's a fabulous musician now. <clears throat> really? What does he play? He plays um, a guitar mostly, bass, guitar. Oh, wow. Yeah. But he also experiments with drums and piano. Mona plays the piano. She trained under a master. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. All right, so like bass guitar is that one that um, like my father used to say, it, like talks to you and it has that mm -hmm. frequency where it just moves through you. Mm -hmm. uh, but piano, like Mona, I'm telling you, that's my thing. Like it's nothing like a good, a great piano solo in a jazz song. So yeah, the piano, when the piano solo goes, I'm just like, everybody just stop talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's your thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you ever have you ever seen a good jazz concert at the um at the Hollywood Bowl? It's my absolute favorite venue. I have one. If you ever, one. yeah, if you ever get a chance and you look at their um what they do, like they'll do series. They have a fantastic reggae um, night, and everybody drops in. And they'll do a Latin jazz night and a reggae night, mm. and all of these famous artists will drop in, and it is just so fun. And if you get great seats, you sit there. You eat, you have a, you know, it's just, it's a, fa it's a fabulous venue, my favorite. Okay. And how have they been since shelter in place? Are they actually open and stuff? They're or? open. They're open. Yeah. yeah. I had some friends there yesterday post a picture and I was like, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. LA is back. All right. I'm so I'm gonna, everyone's going to come back. We're at our 30 okay. seconds now. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Thank you for that. I'm looking it up right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to round two of our breakout sessions. Um, I, I imagine we'll have some more people joining us because I know there was a little bit of a um, confusion about joining the breakout rooms, but thanks you all for hanging in there and clicking the buttons. Uh, my name is Eleanor Mattern and I'm with um, the Air District's Community Engagement Office. Uh, I'll be facilitating this session. And um, here with us today, we also have um, Anish Rana and Brian Butler from the Community Engagement Office, as well as Michael Flagg from the Meteorology and Measurements Division. And so again, welcome. Today we will be talking about a resource called the Bayer Center, and we'll share an overview of our new community grants program. Um, we'd love to hear from you all about what resources would be useful for you uh, and your community. And so, you know, we don't have a ton of time. We found out with our last round, I'm sure you all found this too, that 20 minutes goes by, or 18 minutes, excuse me, goes by very, very quickly. Um, so one thing that we did want to ask 
is do the community folks in the room, um, do you want to introduce yourselves? Um, we want to be, you know, flexible and, and meet you all where you're at and also share some information. Um, so if you want, you can unmute um, at any point as we talk today and, um, you know, have those, those um, introductions. Um, and then I think in the interest of time, what we can do is, is get into a, um, a quick overview of the Bay Air Center. So I'll pass things over to my colleague, Michael Flagg, and he'll provide some information there. We'll take some time for questions. We'll talk about grants and then we'll get into our large group discussion. So Michael, over to you. Sure, thanks Eleanor. Um, hi everyone, I'm gonna provide just a really quick um, informational update about um, an, an upcoming resource that will be available for communities and members of the public that are interested in, in air quality issues. Um, so the Bay Air Center is a third party um, multifaceted resource center that's funded by the Air District that can provide and has the ability to provide a variety of services um, and resources to communities interested in building capacity around all types of air quality topics, whether it be how do I identify pollution sources? How do I access air quality data? How do I design a, an air monitoring study or analyze or interpret um, data that's out there? Um, the format um, is, is, could include, you know, trainings, presentations, demonstrations, um, development of fact sheets and guidance documents, or provide one-on-one -on -one project specific technical support. Um, we're trying to design the Bay Air Center to be dynamic to be able to adapt and to change to fit community specific needs. Um, for the, for example, you know, the Bay Air Center will be able to ask, um, you know, quick one-time questions about air quality um, or provide, you know, a more specific longer term assistance um, for certain projects. Um, we're currently in the pilot phase of this program, but we're working to get the Bay Air Center up, uh, up and running officially. Um, and we really look forward to hearing what types of resources and topics are most needed and how the Bayer Center can best provide that information to you all. Thank you so much, Michael. So I know that was a, a whirlwind, just some high level information. Um, we wanted to pause and see if folks have any um, high level questions about the basic information that Michael just shared. And welcome to folks just joining us. Um, we're talking about the Bay Air Center, uh, a new resource um, available to help build capacity and understanding air quality. Any questions or high level? Um, let's see. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands, but bear with me. I only have one screen here, so I'm not the best at clicking through all the boxes. And then as you can see um, in our chat, thanks to Brian for putting the contact email address in the, in the chat box, and that's on your screens as well. And so if folks have questions about the Bayer Center, um, if you want to learn more, if you want to be kept informed about different um, kind of milestones as the Bayer Center rolls out, feel free to email um, this email address. It's bayercenter at B-A-A-Q dot, I always say that wrong, B-A-A-Q-M-D dot gov. And then, um, you know, we'll make sure to, to keep you informed, keep you in the loop. So thanks again, Michael, for that information. Um, if there are no further questions, um, now we'll bring uh, Anish on to talk about the James Carey Smith Grant Program, which is another resource opportunity that can also support community capacity building efforts. So over to Anish. Thanks, Eleanor. And um, thanks again, everyone, for uh, joining us this evening and participating. Um, really appreciate it. Um, and I don't want to take any more time away from uh, our discussion. Um, so I'll go through this announcement pretty quickly because um, we'd like to hear more from you about you know, what um, capacity means to you and your community. So um, just really excited to share the news that uh, the Air District will be releasing guidelines uh, and call for proposals very soon later this month for the James Carey Smith Community Grant Program. Uh, we're in the very very final stages of preparing that launch. So please uh, keep an eye out for um, when we do that, we'll send a, um, a, a notice out to all of our, um, our networks. Uh, these grants are meant to help support and fund projects that will increase uh, local participation in efforts aimed at improving community environmental health. 
Um, and the maximum amount of an individual grant is 100,000 per year. Uh, Multi-year projects are possible through this grant program uh, with a potential of up to 300,000 in funding over three years. Um, we have two informational webinars scheduled on August 31st and on September 16th, where prospective applicants can learn more about the program and ask questions. Um, and the deadline for submitting applications will be 5 p.m. on October 1st, 2021. And eligible applications uh, uh, are eligible applicants will be community-based groups and local nonprofits throughout the Bay Area. With that, I'll um, turn it over to Eleanor and just uh, let people know that if you um, are looking for more information or have any questions, please feel free to email us at communitygrants at baaqmd.gov. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Anish. So again, that's just a little um, bit of information um, to whet your appetites. This opportunity will be um, rolling out later this month. And so we're really eager to um, hear from different folks. I know questions will come up along the way. And so um, I wanted to see if there are any questions about the basic information um, that Anise shared, or, you know, again, if, if folks have questions about the Bay Air Center, we've got the luxury of having both Michael and Anish here. Um, so if any questions occur to you, um, feel free to um, either raise your hands or you can just unmute. You should have the ability to unmute yourself. Um, you can also drop a question into the chat. We're looking at that as well. So any old way you wanna reach out, feel free. We do want to spend some time too with a, a group discussion. And so we have a few questions for you all. And you know what I think we can do is actually, um, we have the luxury of building off of what the previous round of participants in our breakout session we're talking about, right? And so maybe if we go to our mural board, um, we asked the last round, the last folks um, to share just briefly, you know, in a few words, what does building capacity mean to you? And so um, just to kind of set the stage here, we'll, we'll share what folks said previously. If you have additions to this, um, by all means, you know, put a few words in the chat about what building capacity means to you. Um, but we, we heard from folks previously, right? Education, preparing community to lead, adding staffing, skills, and funding to get the work done, strengthening community members' confidence in their own knowledge. And so um, what we wanna do now is, is build off of that and ask you all specifically, um, what resources would be useful for you and your community? We know that folks are representing um, different communities. And again, definition of community varies, right? Um, the, the folks on one block might be experiencing a different reality from the folks two blocks over. Um, and so we'll be able to record your responses here. If you feel so inclined, you can, again, you can unmute yourselves. Um, if you want to share, um, you know, don't be shy. You can just share it out with the group. We're a small enough group here. Um, and we are getting a question in the chat. Oh, thank you, Hakeem Johnson. Um, so the question is, are cities eligible for the James Carey Smith Community Grant? Um, and I, I have a, a sense of that, but I want to actually ask Anish if he could respond to that, if you're willing, Anish. Sorry, I was uh, taking note. Um, what was the question? Oh, Where? sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. So this is the question from Hakeem Johnson in the chat. Are cities eligible for the James Carey Smith grant? Um, no, it, it's um, so nonprofit groups, local community based nonprofit groups and um, uh, nonprofits with a uh, 503C, 501C3 um, designation are eligible. Great question. Thanks for the clarification. So nonprofit organizations, 501c3s, um, will be eligible for the James Carey Smith grant. That said, we know that partnerships are really critical for this work, right? And so um, we imagine that in a lot of areas there would be um, partnerships or maybe even subcontracting of some sort um, with city entities, with other agencies, things like that in terms of on um, building capacity at the, the local level through James Carey Smith grants. Um, let's see, any other questions? Um, any thoughts on what resources would be useful for you and your community? 
and folks may be able to see, I, I have a smaller monitor, maybe your monitors are, you know, screens where you all are, are, are bigger, but I know we've got a few things from the last group in here that we can add to. Um, the last group talked a little bit about um, energy efficiency, um, resilience hubs, um, adding to clean energy resources. Um, there was a, a conversation about um, emissions inventories, things like that. Um, and another question related um, on a related note is, you know, what can the Air District do to ensure that resources are accessible to you and your community? And so if anyone has thoughts on that, feel free to um, put them in the chat. You can unmute um, or any other way you want to reach out to us. We have a quieter group, and I know we have some staff on the group and some different language supports. Um, so if folks aren't feeling moved to, to share out, no problem. It's also kind of mesmerizing to see the, the Miro board swirling around and doing its thing. Okay, over to Hakeem, I see your hand is raised. Go ahead, I think you can unmute. Yeah. Sure. Uh, just because I, you know, I, I think silence just doesn't allow anyone to, to really have discussions. But I, I think um, from a business community standpoint as well, there hasn't been a lot of um, discussions or engagement surrounding, you know, impacted businesses, which maybe which could be smaller, um, smaller mom and pop shops, right? On how to bring, make sure that they're you know, they're not just being, you know, kind of slapped with, you have to do this to reduce without having that kind of support to be able to do it, right? Um, I, I think that, yeah, I think there needs to be engagements with, you know, the, you know, some of the business community to ensure that, you know, the larger community is benefiting from any reductions that they're all, they're all doing. Thank you so much for making that point, um, that there are all sorts of different members of the community, including small business owners, including, you know, all these different, um, different groups. So thank you for, for noting that, Hakeem. Any other um, uh, thoughts on resources that would be useful for you and your community or what the Air District can do to ensure resources are accessible? And if folks want to do introductions as well, we can do that. Um, Lily, I see you're unmuted, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's intentional, if you'd no, like to it, share. It is intentional. I oh, actually i am not a member of the community. I actually work for the State Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment. And I, I noted um, I've been attending a lot of these um, AB 617 meetings from the perspective of trying to help with the statewide level of different community health concerns. And one of the things that I saw on your um, Bay Air Center earlier graphic about like it was with the fact sheet little um, top little icon. A point made to me earlier today by one of my newer colleagues is that uh, a lot of communities, especially ones that are maybe linguistically isolated, don't benefit from fact sheets as well as our government entities seem to think that they do. It's a very outdated way of doing outreach. And I actually, tend to agree. I'm, I'm newer to the environmental justice side of, of this work. Um, I've only been doing AB 617 work since September of last year, but I, I took that point quite to heart because I'm, I'm noticing statewide that, um, you know, different communities have different resources. And if the state and local government partners in this work don't kind of meet the communities where they are, and sometimes, you know, our idea as government entities saying, okay, we checked our box and gave a fact sheet, so we're good, right? It, it's not it's not meeting the communities where they are. And one of the um, kind of counterpoints to the fact sheet idea that I really liked was like sound bites, where maybe we do like, I don't know, like a little video audio clip that could be inserted into like a YouTube or a podcast or something. And I recognize not all, um, you know, community members have access to internet or, or that kind of thing. But even for radio, like a soundbite, it might be ways to reach communities. Just that mm -hmm. two cents. 
Thank you so much, Lily. That really, really resonates. Um, like you say, it's like if we just slap something on a website and say, all right, got the fact sheets out, is that really meeting people where they're at? Um, and I love what you're raising about sound clips, audio. Um, I know we're such a, a visual <laughs> culture that's really focused on like little videos too. I imagine that could be helpful. Um, any other thoughts from your end or from other folks in the group? about um, effective ways to to reach folks, things that are working, you know, as, as we're looking at um, building this Bayer Center, this resource, what are ways we can actually make sure that it would, you know, get, get out to folks and be used? Any thoughts on that? I think it would be great. I don't know if this is like common among local air districts to compare notes. I do notice that South Coast and San Joaquin, for example, are, are starting to have some cross-pollination of community members going to different CSC meetings and sharing ideas. That That is, I think, helpful. I don't know if it's happened so much in the Bay Area, but reaching out to other local air districts and saying like, what's working for you with your communities and and even sharing with local governments, like what's good, what's not. Absolutely, Lily. And that's the advantage, um, the benefit, one of the benefits of your vantage point of statewide, right? Like no need to reinvent the wheel. Um, I know we're at just about two minutes left. Um, and sorry, Michael Anthony, I just took your job and said that. Um, but I do want to ask really quickly in light of the, the comments the last round, um, are any folks interested in reporting out for our group? Um, I know we heard from Hakeem and Lily. We also have um, some other fantastic folks in our breakout session. Would anyone want to do the report out in, in a minute and a half? <laughs> Okay, I'm not hearing volunteers. So um, if it's okay with folks, we'll plan on Anish doing the report out, but if you feel moved or you suddenly feel inspired, just say the word. Um, okay, so any last thoughts on um, ensuring you know, resources are accessible, um, this notion of the different mediums, the different ways to get at it, um, different things resonate for different people. Um, you know, what are, what are you all seeing? What would be useful for you in your community? This is um, Hakeem again. I, I like Lily's um, comments and ideas. And I think you know, one thing that maybe can be added on, you know, I, you know, I have two kids that are in school and I get a lot of emails and a lot of stuff sent home um, through the, you know, through the school. So is there a way maybe to partner with the school districts um, to get exposure, at least for those that, that have kids in school? I know not everyone does. But is that a possibility? Thank you. And that's perfect timing because as you're saying that, my kid is knocking on my closed door trying to get in the room. So yeah, how do we work with, you know, with the, the organizations and entities serving youth, the, the schools that have a reach into communities, um, all of these different things, we have to take this into account. Um, thank you so much, everybody. I think we're about to close, but thank you for a rich discussion. It's great. All right, welcome. As you are entering the room, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Just whatever whatever you'd like folks to know about you, um, your name, where you're coming in from, and anything else you'd like to share. Hey, Jill, good to see you. We'll just give it a, another second or so. I know sometimes it takes a little while for people to um, move around into the, to the breakouts, but feel free to drop into chat. Anything you want folks to know about yourself. And as you're doing that, I'll just do a quick intro of myself since I'm um, here talking. My name's Kristen. I'm with the Community Engagement Office at the Air District. And I'll just quickly let you know who um, the, the folks that are uh, joining me from the Air District to respond to your questions are um, Christy Riviere, who's with our exec team. Um, we have Dan Ulrich, who's with Meteorology and Measurement. And y'all met Greg earlier in the show. Um, he's here to um, continue responding, responding to questions about the program plan. Um, thank you all for um, introducing yourselves in the chat. Um, 
we'll take a, a quick second before I begin screen share um, to see if there's anyone here who would be down to do a quick 90 second report out um, after um, this round before the next round. Does anyone want to volunteer to do that? No brave souls. Okay, well, Christy, Christy will do it unless someone decides between now and the end of the round that they'd like to do it. Um, by all means, please chime in and let us know. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen and get rolling here because we, you know, have a limited time together. We want to make sure that we have lots of time to discuss. So um, you are in the program plan World Cafe. Just want to make sure you landed where you wanted to. Um, really quick in this World Cafe, we wanted to just provide more of an opportunity to, to dive a little bit deeper into the program plan that Greg shared earlier on and um, to hear from you about um, any immediate reactions you're having um, to the plan any ways that we um, can improve the plan looking forward. So is there anything missing, anything that we should be considering um, us and our community partners? And um, to kick things off, we wanted to first provide an opportunity for you to ask any questions for clarification. So I know we've been um, talking a lot. You've heard a lot of great information. Maybe you have questions. Just want to make sure people feel prepared to launch into the discussion. So you can raise your hand. And again, this is a clarifying question. So you can raise your hand, ask a question, you can drop it into chat. And um, we have a team of folks here who are ready to respond. We'll just spend a couple of minutes here before we get into the discussion. Any, any questions? help you better understand the plan. And if anyone needs me to go back to any of the previous slides that Greg shared, I can do that. I can zoom in if this is hard to see. If you could zoom in, I would be grateful. Okay, no problem, Jill. Is there anything, any certain part of it um, you want me to zoom in on? And then I do see a question as I'm, as I'm figuring out the Zoom. Um, uh, about what are the enforcement measures? So Margie Lewis asked that question. Christy or, or Greg, do you want to respond to that as I'm zooming? Sure, I can start and then Greg um, uh, can correct me or <laughs> make it much better. Um, so the enforcement measures are all the actions um, that any, any actions that we take within our enforcement di division at stationary sources. So it could be notices of violations. It could be following up on complaints at a stationary source. It could be you know, anything related to enforcing any of our rules that uh, relate to a stationary source. Thank you, Christy. The, the only thing that I would add to that is that the, the community emission reduction plan that we're proposing be developed in East Oakland would include a chapter specifically on an enforcement plan. And uh, Ms. Margaret can talk about kind of if she likes how that played out in West Oakland and, and what the impact of that was there. But uh, so in the high priority communities that may not be developing plans, we're going to be looking at what can we do within our current enforcement authority to, to reduce emissions on sources that we know are driving exposure. But it goes broader than that when an emission reduction plan is developed where the community steering committee identify sources for us to target in our enforcement plan or, or other actions that they want our enforcement staff to take. I know in West Oakland, there was a lot of concern about um, backyard fires. And so um, the enforcement staff developed uh, some instructional materials to, for the community to use to, to address that problem. As I said earlier, I would like to hear from, from the East Oakland community to speak uh, I ask the questions. Jill, was there any, um, since I zoomed in, was there any specific element you wanted me to kind of slide over to, or is, does this? No, I, I think I, I think I can, I can get it all now. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks. I know I'm looking at a small screen too. So, uh, um, feel free to, to ask me to zoom or move around as much as needed. Um, and thank you, thank you for that, Miss Margaret, and um, thank you for the question. 
um, Margie. So if there aren't any other questions, I'll go ahead. I do have another question. Okay. On the news recently, they mentioned that near San Jose, there there's an, a small airport and they found that the fuel from the airplanes are causing the kids to have lead poisoning. And I also know that in Deep East Oakland, in one of the schools, they are looking at the actual soil that some of the community has like a community garden there and they're needing to get the soil tested. So I'm wondering, is there a correlation between the air pollution, maybe it's from wildfires, maybe it's from diesels from 880 and whatnot that goes into the soil and causes poisoning the same way that they found in that playground near the airport near San Jose. Hey, I can take a shot at, at answering that, uh, Ms. Lewis. Um, yeah, the lead in particular and, and a lot of heavy metals are known to be deposited in soils. And so uh, right now they still allow, and by they, I mean the federal government still allows lead in the av aviation gas for the small planes. It's not in jet fuel, but it is in the, in the gas for the small planes. And so we have been working with Santa Clara County on that issue down there um, with that airport. And yeah, lead deposition is a problem wherever um, there are general aviation airports. And I am old enough to remember when lead was a big part of gasoline too. So pretty much any community that has a freeway running through it, there's a lot of concerns about lead deposition. So we would be worried about lead and other heavy metals from historical deposition. Um, and then in a lot of these environmental justice communities in particular, you see a lot of, of uh, toxic air pollutants from industry, um, either currently or historically. And so you've got to worry about that in the soil as well. Uh, Craig, there's also a, a question in uh, the chat from Jill um, about related. Um, is there going to be a way to address pollution from the airport as part of the plan? That's a good question. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Thanks, Jill. That's a very interesting question because of the um, the the fact that the federal government preempts state and local governments from regulating air traffic. So uh, we might be able to work with the community to identify a strategy, maybe to better quantify the health risks of the airport. But yeah, we, we share your concern about the potential health risks of the airport and how flight patterns may impact the community. Not so much a worry about lead, but from other pollutants from, from the airplanes. Um. Thanks, Greg. There's a there's another follow up question in the chat, but I also saw Miss Margaret, your hand was up and now it's down. Did you want to? Yes, I want I want to add to the discussion about the airport. If people don't know, the uh, the uh, the Port of Oakland oper operates the Oakland Airport, and there is a plan of action, plan of development, or plan of action to expand the airport. Oakland Airport. And I would agree with Jill that the airport should be included, even though it's under the federal government. But there's a year and a book there that uh, FAA should be part of the, should be engaged with this uh, air, the air monitoring process that CBE will be doing. I think that, that we should, that I just think that they should have the FAA and the airport administrative staff be part of this uh, proposed to have East Oakland as uh, a new 
emission reduction plan or a monitoring plan. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Margaret. Um, so, Greg, Christy, um, there's another question here in the chat. Why are all the polluting sources stationary? Why not moving? Um, the, the plan's going to need to look at both stationary and uh, mobile sources. And uh, just the, the way things are structured in California in terms of who has regulatory authority over what. The, the Air District has authority over the stationary sources um, and the California Air Resources Board and the federal government have authority over the, the mobile sources. But clearly, if you're talking about 880, um, mobile sources are a huge problem in East Oakland and we're gonna need to, to, to work on some strategies and how to mitigate those risks. Great questions. Um, so we have, I'm looking at the time, we have seven minutes remaining um, here together. So I moved us into our discussion questions. There's um, one that we wanted to poll you on, but we can't poll in breakout rooms. So if you wouldn't mind um, just opening up your chat box and adding in the chat, which element most excites you? I can go back to the, the flower petals so you can see them again. Um, and if you wanted to just kind of type in there, which one's most exciting to you, in other words, kind of which ones would you most be interested in participating in? And then we'll move into these three questions around, um, you know, what are your immediate reactions to the program plan? We've gotten a lot of great questions and um, Greg and Christy have been here offering and Miss Margaret some um, responses. So what are your immediate reactions overall? And, and what do you feel like your community needs to co-lead one or more of these elements and then if there's anything missing if there's any way we can improve the plan as we're looking forward it would be really helpful for us to know as well um so i'll go back really quick just so you can see the program elements again um as i um point us to this comment in the chat uh, kaiser air wants to expand into the livermore airport and bring it up to six 737s a day for maintenance and fueling station. Needless to say, we are not in favor. So thank you for sharing that, Anne. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move us now to the virtual whiteboard here. Um, ooh. Still getting acclimated to this uh, Miro. It's, Jan, am I in the right place? Okay, I'm in the right place. <laughs> so what are your immediate reactions to, to the, um, the program plan overall? And as you can see, Beyond has already been kind of jotting things down as we've been in discussion. So please feel free to raise your hand or enter it into chat. What are your overall or your immediate reactions to the program plan? Thank you, Margie. You're excited about evaluating progress, developing plans, and taking action. With positive, can you um, let us know what you mean by positive, Margie? I love that you you offer these very powerful one word responses, and it it makes me want to know more. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm not part of the community members, so I don't want to take the time. So oh. that's why I'm trying to be very brief. Okay. But I just can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. So you're, you're feeling positive. Does anyone want to um, offer any immediate reactions or maybe share with us, share with us what your community needs to co-lead one or more of the program elements? Jill's excited about developing plans and taking action. Jill, if I can put you on the spot, what would um, what would the community need? Since you are, you know, you you're representing East Oakland and your organization, um, what do you think y'all would need to co-lead with the Air District and other community members on these elements that are exciting to you? Well, I think what this what our East Oakland students would probably need um, would be. Uh, 
I mean, first of all, I think probably just having the opportunity to, to explore the ideas that they have, um, to talk with other people and being taken seriously, um, to have an opportunity to build their knowledge um, in a in a setting where they're not going to be shot down for things that they don't know. Um, And those are some of the things that I, you know, I, I, when I think about the high school students that we work with, those seem like some of the key things. And if I could put somebody else on the spot, if Mars is still in this in this breakout room, Mars, what do you think our East Oakland students would need to co-lead an element? Um, <laughs> sorry, I wasn't ready. Um, I would. <laughs> I would definitely just echo what you said, definitely, Jill, about um, just giving youth like the chance to actually be able to speak up and giving them, um, you know, the platform to also be able to do that. I think as youth um, in these type of programs, like and trying to make these type of changes that the youth are making, um, it's really important to know that you have people who have your back and have people who support you and support the different things that you're trying to um, change in your community. So I definitely would just echo Jill in that. Yeah. Thank you, Mars. So great points. So we have about a minute and a half left um, before they will send us back to the main room and we'll have one more round of World Cafe. Does anyone want to share anything else? How about we move, spend this last minute on, um, you know, what's missing from our program plan? What do you think is missing or, or, or can be improved upon? What could, uh, this is Ms. Margaret. What could be improved on is that the staff for Bay Area Park Quality, who's going to be engaged in any form of process with East Oakland, you need to be practicing the environmental justice elements, understand how to balance equity for the voice of the community to be first. And that there's a lot uh, be more forthcoming and making the potential process for, for, the, for the community to speak first. Thank you for that, Miss Margaret. We have 19 seconds left and I just wanted to make note that Margie added something to the comments as well. What is the, what is the price for accountability? So thank you for that, Margie. No, no, process, process. Oh, the process. I was like, I don't know what process. Uh, Richard. Thank you for that. All right, welcome back. Come get your spaghetti. Come and get your spaghetti. Yeah. Miss Margaret, just so you know, we can hear you. Oh, you got it on me. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Hello. Maybe just give like 10 more seconds for people to trickle on in before we get started. Wow. Okay. Well, I think we can go ahead. Oh, Wendy, she has something. Oh, I'm, I'm just. Okay, so hi everyone, hi, and thank you for joining this breakout uh, room. Uh, my name is Carissa White, and I work in the Air District's Community Engagement Office, and will be helping to facilitate tonight's uh, World Cafe discussion on getting started. Um, so the purpose of this. Um, 
World Cafe is to uh, hear directly uh, from you all about your community and your lived experiences uh, and, the, and provide the opportunity uh, for some Air District staff to answer uh, any questions that you all may have. Um, so before we jump into today's um, really quick presentation in World Cafe, um, I did just want to mention a few of the Air District staff that we do have available in this room to answer some of those questions that you guys may have. So we have uh, Miriam and Wendy who work with the planning team um, and they support programs and projects that seek to accelerate uh, emissions and exposure reductions in communities. Um, we also have Kate available who works on air quality measurements uh, and uses monitoring data to better understand air quality for air district programs in the public. Uh, and last but not least, we have Bill who's available and he leads a team that supports uh, understanding air pollution levels in communities with emissions and modeling approaches. Uh, that, I'm gonna pass it over to Phil, who's gonna review a couple of slides with you guys uh, and share some of our ideas on how we think the Air District uh, and you all can get started in this work. So I'll take it away, Phil. Um, <laughs> thank you, Carissa. Before, before I take it away, Maybe we could go back to the um, not sharing screen and just um, if there are community members who would like to introduce themselves um, to give them the opportunity to do so, um, so that um, we're kind of all in the same, in the same space. Are, are there folks who would like to introduce themselves quickly? Uh, I know we don't have a lot of time for these breakouts, but just wanted to give folks the opportunity. I'll introduce myself. My name is Tamara White. Um, I work with a project called Goldport, but I also live in West Oakland in Prescott, which is very near the Port of Oakland and the freeways and all of that. So I have an interest personally and professionally in clean air. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Any other community folks who would like to um, briefly introduce themselves. Yes, um, this is uh, Ken, Ken Sutu from Citizen Air Monitoring Network in Vallejo. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Anyone else? It, it's fine, it's fine if no, I just wanna give folks the opportunity. Um, okay, Carissa, maybe we go back to slide two of the presentation. Thank you. Okay, Deborah, if you can pull the slides back up. So the the idea of this uh, this session is getting started, um, understanding community. If you were with us when Greg kind of walked through the program, um, this is the understanding community pedal of, the, of that iterative process. And tonight, we want to hear your ideas on getting started. And, and by getting started, um, I, I, I want to be clear what we're talking about. So um, to the point that Esther and Michaela and, and others at CBE and other of the community members said during the community perspectives, that the community has been fighting for a long time. So, so in, this, in this case, we're talking about getting started um, working with the Air District specifically on AB 617 um, to move us quickly to actions to reduce air pollution in not just the designated or, um, or the nominated communities, but in all the priority communities within the Bay Area. So we wanna hear your ideas. We have some ideas that we want to share, um, our, our thoughts on how to get started, but we wanna spend most of the time um, at, these, at this session to identify additional ways to get started, things that we have overlooked or, or not included. Um, so next slide, please. So 
Um, as, as we've been talking about, and, and a number of people mentioned, you know, one of the first things that we that, that we want to do is sort of define what's the area, what's the community that we're um, that we're working in, that we're um, working with um, community members collaboratively in, and as was mentioned, you know, it's not the agency's role to define the community boundary. We want to work in partnership to do that. Likewise, as we um, develop community descriptions to make sure that we include the lived experience of community members, um, both the culture, the history, and the strengths, the things that we want to preserve about the community. Um, Miss Margaret uh, made the great point that, um, you know, talking about data sets, we want to be on the same page with with communities that the air district has estimates of emissions we have air pollution measurement data often it's not at the level that we would want but we have some initial starting points community may have their own data sets that they want to bring to the table and so we want to make sure that we understand and and are communicating um, you know what we have and 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 what we want to what roles those um, those data and, and products can provide. So e each of the here, each of the bullets, we're we're thinking about specific elements, specific data products, or specific documents. Um, and then the final the final box here is about what's going on right now, um, what's happening in terms of compliance and enforcement. Or what you know, what is uh, kind of on the regulatory agenda already, both from the state side um, and and the local air district side. What are the grants and incentive programs? What are the opportunities? What are the the local plans and policies that are in place that we can um, you know, start as um, you know bringing together a, a starting point for air district working with the, with the community to to move quickly, as quickly as possible to action. So I'll, you know, in the in the spirit of keeping it brief, I'll stop there and pass it back to Carissa, but um, hopefully get, have, leave time to have conversations. Okay, thank you, Fao. Uh, so I do just wanna pause for a moment and see if anyone has any questions or comments based off of um, the information that Phil just shared. Um, and please feel free to either use the chat box or the raised hand function. Okay, so I'm not seeing any raised hands or any comments. Um, so before we jump into the discussion, I did want to um, take another pause and see if there was anyone from the community who wanted to um, do the report out once we joined the larger group again. Um, so if so, just feel free to volunteer by typing your name uh, into the chat box. Okay, and so um, with that, um, we'll move along to the discussion. Um, we do have a couple questions teed up for you guys. Um, if you would like to provide a comment or um, ask a question, um, just feel free to use the raise hand function or the chat box. Uh, Miriam and Kate uh, will be available and monitoring those. Um, we will be using uh, mirror boards today to capture all of your comments and feedback. Um, and so with the remaining time, um, I'd like to just open up the floor to see if there were any um, initial um, comments or questions from community, um, specifically around um, air quality concerns in your neighborhood. Hi, Carissa, Ken has his hand up. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, um, from our first, I have some concern or question about the air pollution uh, in the community. And as we see from one of the, the four boxes, one is the, the emission uh, inventory and the pollution source. Uh, I was very impressed by the, the work done by Phil, both in Oakland and in Richmond, but they are the the desert, they are the selected AB 617 uh, implementing uh, community. Like for us, we are not. So um, uh, of course, it takes a lot of resource and effort to do the type of inventory for uh, Oakland and 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 
uh, Richmond. But I think for other community, we do need to understand what is our air quality situation. And, and I wonder what kind of uh, help uh, the air district can provide to community who are not selected as the, to be implemented in the, on the AB 617 list. But we, I think we also, we need, usually when we build the inventory, it takes time. So I think it, we should have some plan to help community to actually to build up that data. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that um, that comment and, and question, Ken. Um, I did want to see if anyone from the Air District wanted to um, answer Ken's question specifically on what help can the Air District provide um, in communities that are not selected. Um, so. I, I can address that, Carissa. Um, yeah, thanks for the question, Ken. I think we're on the same page there. Um, it definitely takes time to develop the detailed inventories that we've uh, developed in West Oakland. We're working on for Richmond, North Richmond, San Pablo, but we do have um, a regional emission inventory at a one kilometer resolution that is is not it's not ideal, but it's a starting point. And I I think I, I take your point that it's it, it should be an iterative process. Um, we have you know gridded emissions. Where, where you know the the resolution, the detail is not that great, um, not what you would want. But we also have information about um, about the facilities themselves that is more in, in more detail. So I think we have enough to, as we say, get started and and start having the conversations about you know what's there and, and what's missing. Okay, thank you for that um, reply, Phil. Um, Ken, I see your hand is still raised. Did you have another comment or question? Uh, it's, um, okay, I, I will let other people ask questions, but I, I, I have some uh, follow-up question. I don't want to take all the time. Thank well, you. And then um, Ernesto, I see that your hand is raised, so. All right, so I, I do live in East Oakland in the Havensport area um, between um, San Leandro and uh, International. Um, so I, I'm also close to the East Oakland AC Transit Garage. So um, one of my um, concerns that I have is a lot of these truck attracting facilities and how close they are situated either next to schools or um, neighborhoods. So for example, there's one being built right now on San Leandro at the former GE site, and it's right next to people's backyards um, where there really is no real buffer there. Um, and not only that, you know, sites like Acorn Woodland and Encompass, they have r and our, I think RNA trucking right next to them, as well as the, the U-Haul and other facilities that are within that block, um, that large industrial block that separates the school and um, it, the school from um, San Leandro Street, where there's also on the other side, AB&I Foundry, and not far from AB&I Foundry, there's also um, the, this, um, uh, Argent Materials, which is this concrete crushing facility. And um, a couple of years ago, they were able to uh, purchase a, a new site, kind of like almost, it felt like almost overnight, developing a corner of 85th and San Leandro. And now they're housing a lot of crushed asphalt um, and other materials there in a pretty quick fashion when before um, there were just storage containers there. So I think those are just part of a lot of different emissions that I know exist um, that have come up. Um, and I hope that more can be brought into future community meetings. Thank you for that feedback and comment, Ernesto. Um, really useful and helpful to know that that's um, what's occurring and happening um, in East Oakland and near where you live. 
Um, I don't see any additional hands raised, but perhaps uh, we do have a couple minutes left. Um, oh, Ken, I just see your, um, your hand went up. So. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I don't want to take all the, the, the time, but if there's still some time left, uh, mm -hmm. just like Ernesto mentioned, for example, there is a foundry and there is a crashing of like rock crushing facility. I think these type of things are the, the real situation faced by the community. And how do we quantify or at least qualify the, the, the impact to the, the community? That's how, that's the, the thing which I think we can do before a community is selected as the, 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 the AB617 community, because those are the, the real problems faced by the community. And we, I think with the, the, the air district needs to develop a plan to actually to help to, to identify or qualify or, or quantify this type of impact to the community before even the community is selected as the AB617 community. Because as we see in the previous two cases, it's like the, the plan was developed like over a year or something, which is like very compacted. And uh, so, especially when we are talking about AB 617, we are talking about the, uh, the community level. So the regional level data is useful, but it's, it's, it's not helpful in the, uh, from the community's point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, and then Ernesto, I see that your hand uh, was raised again, so I want to open the floor to you. Yeah. Um, I want to give so a minute warning. Okay, um, I'll, I'll be real quick. So uh, part of me wants to push back on that because I think there are some facilities of concern that have been researched and where we, we do have some initial data about the impact that it's had on the surrounding community. I think what we do need to have a better understanding of is um, the, the, the existing facilities, especially auto shops that are either uh, that whether or not they are in compliance at this time and what kind of enforcement there is on, on those um, sites. Because I know that that's also been brought up as a concern in, in various neighborhoods, but enforcement on those um, sites can be more difficult for safety concerns, um, especially for neighbors. So um, yeah, I, I do think that it, the, when the community is demanding for a 670 project or uh, process, they, they know what they need. I think that the question uh, for the air district is the types of actions that they can take to really hold these facilities accountable because often with, um, with whatever is passed either within the district or um, even at the land use level of the city, oftentimes um, there are protections more for the industry rather than the surrounding community. And I hope that that can change as part of the 617 process because I've even seen that with the proposed industrial ordinance that's going through the city of Oakland where there's a lot of consideration for these truck attracting businesses, but not really for the neighborhoods that, um, that are being used as truck routes for these businesses. Ernest, I just want to say thank you for your, your comments and your feedback. Um, this breakout room is about to close in a few seconds, but I just wanted to say thank you. Welcome back. Come and get your spaghetti. Miss yeah. Margaret, just so you know, we can hear you. Oh, you got it on me. Thank you. Um, just waiting for folks to trickle in from their breakout rooms. And it seems like we're all back, yes? Okay, so Anish, we'll start with you. Did you um, decide to report back yourself or is there a designated person from your breakout room? Yes, we um, we opened up the uh, question to uh, our participants, and um, 
uh, we didn't get any volunteers for to do this share up, so I'm gonna do it for our group. Um, again, our breakout topic was capacity building. Uh, there were about 10 to 12 participants in our breakout round, uh, breakout room this round. Uh, we continued our conversation on capacity building, including what capacity building means uh, and what resources their district could provide to the communities that they would find useful. Uh, we had a really great conversation around community engagement. Um, participants shared concern about lack of engagement with small business owners and highlighted the need to provide space for smaller mom and pop shops to be involved and provide their input in the process. Um, participant also highlighted the importance for government entities uh, to really improve their communication with community and meet the community where they are, especially through um, schools and other organizations that have established relationships with the community. Thanks, thank you, Anish, and thanks for um, extending that opportunity to the participants in your breakout. Uh, Christy, you're next. Uh, are you reporting out or is someone else? I am reporting out unless somebody in our group wants to quickly jump in and, and do that, that would be fabulous. But if not, I will continue speaking. So uh, we were the program plan deep dive and we had about 20, 22 people in the room. And we talked about what most excites people, also clarified some, uh, some of the plan elements and we asked people's immediate reactions. And I think what was uh, awesome to hear is when people had clarifying questions, they seemed to me to be already starting to do some of the elements. So it's kind of demonstrating what they're most excited about, which is better understanding the community, the air pollution in the community and starting to plan solutions and also starting to talk about take action. So they were um, kind of already diving in as they're asking their questions, which was great. In terms of what folks needed, I think one of the more powerful things I heard was that the youth, the community and the youth especially need to feel like they need, they need to be taken seriously. They need to be given the opportunity to learn about the issues, to you know, gain a strong level of understanding and no matter where they're at in terms of their understanding um, on these issues to be taken seriously and to, for what they come up with, for their, their interest and their concerns to be heard. Um, so that for me was powerful and um, I hope they do stay engaged and, and be part of this process because I think it would be a, a fantastic thing. Christy, that is powerful and we've already heard from many youth this evening and we understand how compelling they can be. Um, Wendy, is it you or? Yes, thanks Joshua. So yeah, we were in the getting started understanding community uh, breakout room. We did invite a speaker, but um, it's getting to be the end of the night. And so it is just me. I will be very brief. We had about five uh, folks in the room with us, community or other agencies, not your district. And we talked about how to get started, a good conversation about the types of air pollution sources that are a most concern in places like Vallejo and East Oakland. We talked about the long run time or lead time to get to community scale inventories of emissions, which is needed for a fully designated community plan and talked about some of the strategies to get ahead of the curve, which is what getting started is about to gather the information we know from regional modeling to ground truth it with what folks know about their own community to work with community to start advancing that conversation very early and um, to start gathering input on what kinds of facilities and uh, pollution sources the community would like us to look at deeper early. And so it was a theme of uh, getting going, getting started, and community does concerns them. So we should be getting started with community as the getting, the getting started pedal, understanding community pedal is about. Thank you, Wendy. So everyone, we really would like to respect your time, especially hanging with us this late into the evening. So for this last rotation, we're going to kind of, we're gonna go kind of like a speed round of 10 minutes and we'll keep it organic, right? So I'll leave it up to the facilitation team. So that's Eleanor, Kristen, and Carissa. You can guide the discussion how you feel is best productive for the, the remaining 10 minutes we have in the breakout room. So again, as a reminder, go through with your third rotation, choose any room you like, double up if you need to, or stick with me in the main room. Enjoy.
Hi, everybody. Welcome to the third round of the World Cafe breakout sessions. It's really great to have you here. Um, my name is Eleanor Mattern, and I'll be facilitating. I'm with the Community Engagement Office, and my colleagues um, Brian Butler and Anish Rana are here, as well as Michael Flagg from the Meteorology and Measurements Division. Um, so today we'll share some information about a resource called the Bayer Center, um, and we'll share an overview of our new community grants program. I know our time is super brief, so we'll just do that pretty quickly, and we'll share some email addresses so you can reach out with, with information, and if time allows, we'll have a little bit of discussion and Q&A as well. Um, so without further ado, I will pass it over to Michael to talk about the Bay Air Center, um, a new resource. Hi everyone, um, I'm just going to provide a real quick update on an upcoming resource that will be available to communities interested in air quality issues. Uh, the Bay Air Center is a third party multifaceted resource center that's funded by the Air District that can provide a variety of services and resources to communities interested in building capacity around all types of air quality topics from identifying pollution sources to accessing air quality data or designing a monitoring study. Um, the, the vehicle for getting this information to people is really going to be trainings, um, presentations, development of, of, of fact sheets or guidance documents, or project-specific technical support. So it's designed to be a dynamic program, and it's intended to change and adapt to sp specific community needs. Um, for example, the Bayer Center will be available to, to ask um, quick questions about air quality or provide more in-depth specific assistance for, um, for longer term projects. Um, we're in a pilot phase right now, but we're working to get the Bayer Center up and running officially. Um, and we really look forward to hearing what types of resources um, are most needed and how the Bayer Center can um, best provide that information to you all. Thank you so much, Michael. I think that was an award for short and sweet, um, talking about the Bayer Center. Um, so want to draw everybody's attention to the email address um, at the bottom, oops, sorry, thank you, <laughs> on this slide at the bottom, and, um, you know, we're, um, we've just had my colleague Brian has added this to the chat as well, so if you have questions about this resource or if you want to be kept informed about um, next steps as, as this rolls out, um, feel free to send an email to bayaircenter at baaqmd.gov. Um, does anyone have any high-level questions about the information that Michael shared? I know it's a lot in a, in a very short time frame, um, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to put those in the chat um, or raise your hand. I'm not seeing any questions at this point. And so with that, I'd like to um, pass it over to Anish Rana now to talk about um, a new iteration of the James Carey Smith Community Grant Program. So over to Anish. Thanks, Eleanor. And yeah, I'll try to keep uh, my comments um, brief as well. Um, so we have time for discussion after. Um, we have really exciting uh, news um, regarding uh, the James Carey Smith Community Grant Program. We're very close to launching. Um, expect uh, the announcement to come out later this month. Um, these grants are meant to help support and fund projects that will increase local participation in efforts aimed at improving community environmental health. Community-based groups and local nonprofits with a 501c3 uh, designation throughout the Bay Area are eligible to apply for these grants. Um, the maximum amount for an individual grant is 100000 per year. Multi-year projects are possible through this program with the potential of up to 300000 in funding over three years. Uh, we have two informational webinars coming up scheduled on August 31st and September 16th, where prospective applicants can uh, learn more about the program and ask questions. And the deadline to submit applications will be on 5 p.m. will be at 5 p.m. on October 1st, 2021. And finally, for more information, um, you can visit the link uh, or for more information and any questions you may have, you can um, visit the link that's listed here or you can email us at communitygrants at baqmd.gov. Thanks. Great, thank you so much, Anish. Um, we do have uh, one question in the chat. 
um, that has come in. And so I wanna acknowledge that. Um, and I think um, in the interest of, of you know, providing a little bit more information, Michael Flagg, if you're able to talk about that and then we'll see if, if there are any questions about the grant program. Right, sure. So the question was um, whether or not the Bayer Center was developed to address a specific need. Um, and, and really quickly, I think, you know, the it, it, it's, it was designed to provide, you know, an additional um, place for community members, members of the public um, to access resources, um, you know, in an easy and in a, in a one stop shop. So it was it was developed with the, um, the intent of providing resources in the resources, you know, that communities are interested in receiving um, or, or are interested in, um, you know, to support that kind of, um, you know, capacity building in terms of air quality for, for Bay Area folks. So um, that was kind of the, the need in terms of like getting resources to people in the best way that we can. Thank you so much for the question, Margie and Michael for addressing that. Um, were there any high level questions about the community grants? Again, those will be coming out later this month. We're really excited and, and we will have lots of um, opportunities to, to really get into specifics about those grants through the webinars and through other formats. So seeing no, no hands raised, let's go now to the mural board that we've been working with. Um, and so, you know, what we'll do is just open this up for a large group discussion. We have limited time left, but, you know, we're, we're really enjoying the chance to hear from different folks this evening about um, building off of this concept of what is community capacity building? Um, what does it mean to build capacity? And then what resources would be useful for you and your community? Um, in addition, we have had some great discussions around what the Air District can do specifically to look at accessibility of resources. Um, so as folks you know, can see in the sticky and, and was addressed briefly in the report out, you know, there's this, this um, reminder that you, know, you can't just put a fact sheet out there and, and we can't do that and consider that our work is done. Do folks have any um, additional questions, considerations, thoughts on resources that would be useful um, or accessibility of resources? And since we're a relatively small group, feel free to unmute, your, unmute yourself um, if you'd like, or if you wanna throw some chat thoughts in the chat, um, whatever you're interested in. I know we're down to the last couple of minutes, but I'm an optimist. I think we can squeeze a little bit more information out. What about hubs to address um, underserved and impacted communities during like horrible bad air days? Or if, you know, when we have the rolling blackouts or whatever, especially, you know, if people have needs for better air filters or if they've got, you know, medical devices that, you know, when the PG&E shuts off the, uh, the electricity, places that people can go. Thank you so much, Margie. So looking at this notion of, of hubs, of resource hubs, or, you know, whether that's a clean air center or, or a, a gathering spot or distribution of resources um, for when things get especially bad, as we know they do. Um, Thank you so much for that. So putting that there, is there anything in particular, Margie, are there any examples that come to mind for you that, um, that the Air District or other agencies could build off of um, that we might look to as, as we look at things like that? Well, I'm just thinking like distributing um, N95 masks or something when we know that the fires and we're just in the beginning now and it's been all summer and it's gonna intensify, you know, distribution hubs, getting the word out to the community, um, letting them know that if they're rolling blackouts, that there'd be a place where you can, you know, always be using your um, oxygen or whatever it is that, whatever kind of device one might need. It doesn't have to be oxygen, it could be something else. Welcome. So we have 10 minutes for speed lightning round. <laughs> hey, Ken, good to see you. 
We got the, the lightning round. Um, so I'm just gonna get right into it and share my screen here. I'm Kristen, I should probably introduce myself. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm with the Community Engagement Office at the Air District. And I have um, some colleagues here um, who, are, who are here to answer any questions um, for you. So this should look familiar. This is part of the presentation. Um, I know it feels like a long time ago um, when Greg was presenting on the program plan. Um, let me just zoom into these flower petals for you so you can see them a little bit closer. So I just wanted to start off, we'll just, we'll just jump right in it and, and ask folks do you have, and I have beyond uh, behind the scenes from Intraethnica um, taking notes on a virtual whiteboard, but uh, do you have any questions about the plan, like overall questions for clarification um, that my colleagues can respond to or any immediate reactions? Does, any, does anything stand out to you as um, something you really want us and our community partners to know? You can go ahead and raise your hand. Type it into chat or unmute yourself and shout it out. Any questions for clarification or um, immediate reactions? Or a smaller group as we get into the later hours. <laughs> Um, when you say the plan, can you clarify a little bit and where we can find the plan? Yeah, Christy or Greg, do you want to help clarify what I mean by the plan and let folks know where they can learn more about it? Yeah, so the program plan is essentially what you see here. This is a diagram, a kind of an infographic synopsis of it. Um, we're actually working on kind of and more details, more information in writing, but we don't have it all yet because this is you know, something we've never really described in this way, the AB 617 program. We have a you know literature out there. We have the website that describes the AB 617 program and how it works according to state law. But in terms of you know framing it this way across these seven elements, we've just started kind of putting that on paper. So this is it, the seven elements. But we can, like I said, we're putting more narrative together to describe what that means and how it plays out. You'll mostly see it in some of our board staff reports. We've done some uh, descriptions of, of it there. But as we get better in terms of telling the story of the entire program, we'll certainly share it with you all um, in whatever form it takes, a web page or a brochure or something of that nature. And other air district staff, if I miss something, no, feel free to. Does that help? Yes. That was a great question. Is it Tamara or Tamara? Tamara. Mm -hmm. Tamara, thank you. Any other questions or immediate reactions? Anything you wanna share with us? Um, I, this is Tamara again, I have another question. Um, okay, so I get that this is the plan, you know, the elements that are listed here. So how do organizations and community members, we're giving input about the process I get, but I'm just trying to fit in, trying to figure out how organizations and people in the community fit into this plan. Like how would we participate, other than these meetings, how would we be part of the plan or would we, are we? Well, Tamara, may I ask, are you, are you um, a resident or, or work yes. in East Oakland? Both. Well, I don't work in East Oakland. I live in West Oakland um, in Prescott. And it's a similar situation to East Oakland mm -hmm. in terms of air quality problems. Yeah. And I also work with a project called GoPort. Um, but I'm impacted after 16 years of living in West oh. Oakland. I'm definitely you know, impacted by air issues. So I'm just trying to understand both, yeah. you know, professionally how I would fit in since I'm working with a project that does deal with air quality and also as a resident. Well, so, in, so maybe we need to back up a little bit. Um, so AB 617, this entire program is about working with communities um, 
in terms of where they're at, are they ready to start developing an emission reduction plan? Um, West Oakland was one of those communities that was ready to do so. They were actually selected first, the first community selected to work with us, to partner with us, to develop an emission reduction plan. Um, so they actually have something underway. They've already developed the plan and um, are in the process of implementing it. And we can put you in touch with that steering committee, that process, or the planners at the Air District who are working on that and tell you how to you know, get engaged in that process. Are you talking um, about WOCAP? Yes. Oh yeah, um, I'm involved in that. I was just wondering okay. if this is different or if this is directly related to that. This is, to yeah, this is what we're seeing here right now is the entire 617 program, how it would play out in every community. So okay. it's kind of like the big programmatic thing. And then individual communities will either be working on an emission reduction plan, or maybe they're building shared capacity, or maybe they're trying to better understand their community. Not all communities will be in the formal planning process at the same time, the way West Oakland has been. We're I actually nominating the next community to start that uh, formal planning process and considering East Oakland as the next community. But that doesn't mean other communities can't be doing something else along this flower petal kind of structure of our program. Um, say for, for Leo, which is one of our communities, they maybe are in the build shared capacity or understand community area. Or maybe they're doing some planning solutions even though they're not doing a SERP with us. Um, so that's what we're trying to describe here today, kind of the big giant program and how it plays out in a specific community. Um, maybe, it, you know, in West Oakland coming up, but also in other communities, how it can play out. I can also add, you know, um, there's the, the ways you can get involved in the, in, you know, community by community through the, the steering committees, as you're, as you're aware of. Um, we're also right now, um, uh, applications are actually live for Community Advisory Council for the Air District. And one of the primary projects that that group will be working on is informing the overall AB 617 program planning. So how do we move forward um, as Christy was sharing in this, in this larger program? So that's another thing. If you, anyone on this call or, or um, if you know of anyone who would be interested, it's a, it's a great opportunity to inform um, and shape how this work is gonna look going forward. Um, I just wanna call to out- yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to call the two minute warning. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Awesome. Yep. I was going to do the same. We're on the same, we're on the same wavelength. Fantastic. So any other, any other thoughts or questions? One question we had in our, um, in our discussion was, um, is there anything missing? Is there anything that um, the air district and our community partners should be considering um, as we're looking forward, as we're planning the future of this program, is there anything we should be thinking about or considering? You can feel free to chat it or um, raise your hand. I know it's getting late into the evening. We have one minute left for any final thoughts or comments suggestions, anything about the plan that excites you that you're really excited to get working on in your program or sorry, in your community. So we have these flower petals here. Is there one or two that really speak to you? If you wanted to share that, that would be really helpful for us as well. Yes. Nope, we're getting uh, sent back out of the break room. So it was really great chatting with, with you all. And thank you for hanging on until 823 with us. Really appreciate you. We'll see you all in the main room. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. So you guys, uh, what do you guys think about um, if we just bypass uh, the presentation and just go directly into the discussion questions? That seems fine. Um, or, or we could just do a speed, like we just do it through like one minute to get through the whole presentation. We could do that too. Okay. That sounds good to me. 
Um, so I see people are starting to, to join this room. So I just want to say hi and thank you to everyone for uh, joining this breakout room. Uh, my name is Carissa White and I am a staff specialist in our community engagement office at the Air District uh, and I will be helping to facilitate tonight's discussion. Uh, so the purpose of today's activity for uh, the Tool Cafe is to hear uh, and learn directly from you all about your community and your lived experiences and also provide the opportunity for Air District staff to answer any questions you may have. Um, so I am gonna pass it over to Phil. Uh, we do have a couple really quick um, PowerPoint presentation slides that we wanted to review with you um, before we jump into the discussion. So Phil, I'll let you take it away. Um, so thank you for joining this session. So just wanted to clarify if you were um, in the room when Greg kind of talked about the overall program. This getting started is about understanding community. And tonight we wanna to hear your ideas about how we get started in doing that. We have a few ideas that we wanna share of our own um, very briefly, and then um, spend most of the, the short amount of time that we have um, on hearing your additional ideas on, on what we do to get started. And so, each of these bullets here kind of represents a product or um, you know, something that we think would be helpful as we uh, get started working with communities. And, and here we're talking about not just the nominated or designated communities, but all of the priority AB 617 communities. We wanna work with communities as has been mentioned, it's not the Air District who should define boundaries or develop community descriptions. Um, but we want to make sure that we work with communities to incorporate their um, perspective of community and, and incorporate the known community concerns. Um, we want to we want to share emission inventories, even if it's preliminary, about what we have, so that we can start iterating and and working, um, sharing data sets about air pollution, and and we want to highlight any efforts that are going on right now in terms of compliance and enforcement, rules that are under development or planned, and grants and incentive programs, as well as um, local plans and policies, just to make sure that we're kind of all like called out everything that, that we know about and that the that, that community knows about. So I'll, you know, I'll stop there and, and we can move on to um, getting, getting everyone's ideas. Thanks, Phil. I did want to just uh, take a moment and see if anyone has any questions or comments um, regarding what Phil just mentioned over the past two slides. Okay, uh, so no questions or comments, so we can go ahead and get started with these discussion questions that we have for our last like six minutes or so. Um, so I just want to open it up to um, community members that are in this breakout group um, to, um, you know, answer these questions as best as you can. Um, so the first one is, what does air quality mean to you? Um, and it might be useful to kind of just tie this into the second one as well, which is what information do you have about your community's air quality concerns? So feel free to either use the raise hand uh, function or you can drop your comment or question into the chat as well. And it looks like Deborah is trying to navigate to our mirror board to capture your comments and feedback. So thank you, Deborah. And if there are no immediate like questions or comments to the first two questions, um, you can just provide a general comment or feedback, or you can go to the third question too, which is uh, what information do you need to better understand air quality within your community? I'm also just gonna jump in and say, uh, you can ask us any questions in the last four minutes and just you know see, see if we can answer them uh, and or introduce yourself. I see Jill and Hakeem, um, thank you for joining us. And Lily, if you wanna introduce yourself or ask a question, it, this time is for any, for any questions, we will do our best to answer them or catalog them. So these are our last few minutes together. Somebody wants has something to say or even a comment. We'll we'll take it. Good 
Go ahead, Hakeem. Sure, I'll jump in again for the the first time just to break some of the silence. Um, you know, I, I work at the Chevron Refinery. I'm, I'm, I'm a member of the SERP um, steering committee for the Richmond, San Pablo, um, North Richmond area. And a lot of the early questions that we've gotten in this process um, from other SERP um, committee members is really trying to understand where the sources are um, in a community, right? There's, there are the hot spots that, that were done during the air monitoring uh, piece. There was the um, three months of driving street by street. And I think as, and as more information comes out, folks will be able to, I think it's important to understand sort of where the, the hot spots are and where the concerns are um, within the community. And that that information, I think, would help get a broader understanding on, you know, getting started and understanding a path forward. Thank you, uh, Hakeem, for your, your questions and your, your feedback. Um, I see that we still have a couple more minutes and a few community members. So I did, you know, just want to keep this space open for you guys. Uh, I do know that it's very late. It's 830. And so people's brains have probably checked out. So no worries if there aren't any questions or comments. Um, just happy to be able to provide this space and see some of your faces um, this Thursday night. So. Well, this is just one of the things that comes up um, when our students do surveys of um, their classmates. And that's that a lot of the students are really concerned about um, what or would really like to be able to take advantage of air filtration. And, um, and so finding a way for, for home air, air filtration to be more affordable to people or more available to people is one thing that might really be of interest. Thank you, Joe. And then can you mention, and uh, we didn't ask this earlier, but what uh, community are you associated okay. with? So um, I work with the New Voices Are Rising and we have students, uh, the students that I'm, I'm thinking of who've done polling of their classmates are East Oakland students in the Havens Court area. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, so we have about one minute left. If there are any last minute comments, questions, feedback, smiles, I'll take it all. Uh, so uh, between Jill and um, Hakeem, did either of you guys want to do a really quick report back or did you want someone from the Air District to, to take over that? I don't know that we're doing report backs. Oh, we're not? Okay. I, I have been asking because we're just so short on time, but um, if somebody wants to take roll the dice that we are and take up the torch, I would be happy. But there's no pressure. I actually don't think we have time for a report back. So I think it's all yours if you want it. <laughs> Jill. But there was one other thing that, that has yes. come up um, in our oh, in our student. Well, never mind. Twenty seven. Oh, tell us later. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, well, thanks everyone for participating. I know it's been a long evening, but I, I really do appreciate. I think all of us at the Air District appreciate everyone. Um, joining this session. Thanks everybody. Thank you all. And anyone struggling to choose a breakout room, we can certainly help you here. I don't see the box. Can you put me in room one? Uh, sure, Margie, I will find you. Jill, where do you want to go? <laughs> I'll go to room three. <laughs> okay. Is that the grant one or? Oh, wait, uh, getting started. Getting started. Okay. So I saw the number designation, Margie, in the chat earlier. Can someone help me? Room one, which one is that? Grant capacity. Thank you. All right, off you go, Margie. Anyone else need support?
Wendy, are you here? Or did you get in this time? I think she got in. Awesome. Put me in grant. Uh, put me in grants to pass capacity. Got you, Miss Margaret. Mr. Olp, do you need assistance? <laughs> <laughs> You're on mute. Um, yeah, no, sorry, I was freezing up there for a second. Um, Joshua, there are a few um, more people in the main room this time. I don't think they were here before. Mars Keith from New Voices Rising and Logan Largent. Okay, thanks for that. Um, okay, thanks for that. Um, I noticed some of them are my colleagues. You can see that as well. I noticed uh, Laura from the Port of Oakland. She's been hanging in the main. Oz. Uh, Dr. Tompkins has chosen not to go to a room, it looks like. Um, if anyone's in the main room and needs assistance, um, please speak up. Uh, if you wanna discuss anything that's not being discussed in the breakout rooms, uh, feel free. We are recording your comments and uh, taking questions. Josh, maybe I'm just seeing the chat. Maybe we could put the link for the evaluation in the chat as a way to, so you can go through that slide quicker. Would that, was that part of your plan? That was not part of my plan. I and dropped I, it in there, guys. It's there. Hey. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, and that way we can Light. go there. Light worker. Thank you so much. Um, and just a reminder, we also have the, the CAC announcement from Kristen. I have that ready to drop in the chat. So if you want to give that like 10, 15 seconds and refer to the chat link, I'll have that ready to go when you do it. I'll wait for your queue. All right. Thanks for that clarity. So I'm passing that to Kristen. No, I think she just was asking that somebody announce it. Um, okay. And I have the, I think she maybe sent you already talking points, but I could also just put in, send you a message with what I'll put in the chat, which is fine. I'm going to pass that to Anisha. I know so little. Okay. <laughs> I feel I do. Let me just get make sure we're on the same page and each other. Are we going to do a share out or should I get the next step slide up and ready to go? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think since everything's lightning, I think we should just go ahead and give folks, people have been really, first of all, we're not hearing from community on the report outs. I don't think that's going to change. And everybody from the air district staff is kind of adhering to the 90 second rule. So, okay, we're good. We'll be good. Yeah. 
Sounds good to me. Yo, I'm gonna break away just to turn the lights on outside. Be right back. Two minutes left. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Maria. As we're, some of us are like nodding off a little, <laughs> the two minute warning, it's much appreciated. All right, 34 seconds, everybody will be back. Good luck on the final stretch. Thank you. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, I needed that little boost there. All right, welcome back everyone. Oh no, I see it's still counting down. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the main room. You've been around the world. Uh, so that was our, our World Cafe rotation. Um, you've been through the third rotation, so we're gonna take a little time to hear from um, each group. Start with Anish again. Thanks, Joshua. Uh, yeah, um, round uh, three, this room again is the capacity building room. Um, we had about 20 participants in our breakout room this round. Uh, we didn't have much time to uh, get um, as much um, comments or into as much discussion as we wanted to with this, this round, but uh, we did hear some really good uh, points around uh, the need for hubs or resource centers to serve 
impact of communities during poor air quality events or during power outages or, or blackouts. Great, thank you, Anish. Christy. Uh, well, like the other group, the program plan meeting didn't, didn't get a lot of time, as none of us did, but um, we actually had some really good clarifying questions, which made me, uh, I think, think that we need to do a better job of communicating what this is all about. So people ask, you know, what is the what is the plan? And we had to say, well, it's, it's this flower petal, you're kind of looking at it. And, but they also asked, asked um, you know, how does community fit in? And I thought those are some really great questions because, you know, being, you know, government staff folks, we sometimes are so deep into it, sometimes we forget that people can get lost in this thing that we're trying to present and we think we're trying to be clear, but we always need to continue working harder to do a better job of describing this whole thing and how community really can fit into this and tap into it and then deeply engage and participate. And I sometimes think we lose track of that. So it's great to get those questions to remind us to do to do better. Great point, Christy. That's a, an excellent reminder. Uh, Wendy. All right, I'll take us home on this. So we were in the Getting Started Understanding Community Room and there, we had a small group of uh, three folks um, and we talked a little bit about some of the needs to really understand hot spots and really focused on those places where the pollution is the most intense or hot, I guess. And then also, um, we, we learned that students, especially in East Oakland, are really asking about indoor air filtration. I think there's a, a need, a deep need to know everything you can to protect yourself, especially during wildfires and, and especially with the poor ambient air quality around them. So um, take that back. And, uh, you know, I think we need to listen to what young people are saying to us as always. So we'll bring that piece of information back. And that was all the time we had. Back to you, Josh. Thank you, Wendy. And thanks you all for being flexible with the breakout room times. It's putting us back on track in terms of our ending time at 8.30. Um, wanna highlight one thing in the chat. Uh, we have our uh, evaluation form there um, in English and I believe in Spanish as well. So I don't wanna get, get that lost in the shuffle as we try to wrap up quickly. So turn your attention to that when you can and passing off now for next steps. And should we have Veronica take this part? Okay, yeah, sorry. I was trying to un unmute myself. No worries. Um, so I just wanna say uh, thank you all for your um, participation. It was really important. Um, as you've seen tonight, the Community Health Protection Program has many, many moving parts. And uh, even though we were able to talk about them and explain them, um, it always looks a little bit different in action. So we're embarking on a, a really incredible journey. I'm excited about it. Um, over the next year, uh, you'll hear from us, Air District staff, we'll be working closely um, with communities to advance this work on the, the various front. So in West Oakland, that means continuing uh, working with the community and West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project on implementing the community action plan. Um, in North Richmond, um, Richmond, San Pablo, um, that means supporting the, uh, our new steering committee there. We've got incredible uh, leadership um, and we're really excited about um, Richmond. Um, we'll work in close collaboration um, with CBE. They're uh, a really important community partner and anchor for us here in East Oakland. Um, and we'll uh, work with them and others to ask CARB to designate East Oakland for the development of a community emission reduction plan, um, as I talked about earlier. Um, and then in terms of funding, we'll provide our uh, James Carey Smith community grants to support uh, capacity building with community members and outreach so that they can engage in this process um, and learn more about air quality. And as we discussed, we'll, we're gonna continue working with other overburdened communities to build a shared understanding of air quality and priorities and community concerns and provide the information um, that community needs to get started with improving their local air quality. And very importantly, um, we'll be in learning mode um, to learn from the community about their lived experiences because it's critical for us to be able to do our work effectively. 
Um, I want to thank you all again for being here. This has been really amazing. Um, there's just so much passion and excitement for this work. And so I want to thank you for coming out and sharing that with us. Um, and I'll now pass it back to Josh. Thank you, Veronica. And uh, I want to thank my co-facilitator, Anish Rana. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you as usual. Uh, you see this slide here, everyone. Uh, turn your attention to the workshop evaluation. There's the link there, and also it's in the chat. Anish, uh, I'd like to bring you to address the audience. Excuse me, how you open up? Are you supposed to do the survey now? Or are you supposed to uh, go back? How, how, what is the process to, to uh, do the survey right now? Let's go into the chat, Miss Margaret, and you'll see a link. Uh, it's a surveymonkey.com link. Just go ahead and click on it and it should bring up a window on your internet browser. Can we drop the link in the chat once more? Just to make it easier. I don't see it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna drop it in there one more time. There we go. It's not in the oh here you go. Perfect. So yeah, if you click on that um, that hyperlink there, it should uh, bring a window into your internet. Added. You got it. Perfect. Good question, Ms. Margaret. Uh, Anish? Thanks, Joshua. Yeah, and um, real quick, um, quick announcement before we close up. Uh, but first, I also too want to acknowledge uh, it's been a long night um, and want to echo Joshua and Veronica and say, you know, thank you for um, participating and hanging in there uh, with us all the way to the end. So uh, thank you again. Thank you. Um, the Air District's Board of Directors is forming the agency's first Community Advisory Council. This group of individuals will meet regularly to help develop key Air District initiatives, including future AB 617 program planning. The application is now live and will close September 7 at 5 p.m. Please check uh, the chat now for the link to where you can find more information on our website. And um, with that, um, Josh, I'll just uh, hand it back to you uh, to close out. Yeah, again, Anish, pleasure working with you. Thank you to everyone who joined us this evening, making this such a productive uh, conversation. We learned a lot on the Air District side. Um, I hope we were able to share with you. And congratulations to East Oakland. Um, looking forward to big things in the future. Thanks all the Air District staff and leadership as well. You all have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Dr. Thomas. Hey, Josh, take care. Thank you. You too. Good night. Nice work, Josh. Hey, thank you. Special shout out to InterEthnic. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. Did you catch that leadership and stamina? <laughs> For real. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. Thank you very much. <laughs> sure.